And we're back. Welcome back. Welcome into the zone. The toilet zone. Toilet time. Episode 94. U.S. Digital Dictators. So what is on the chat logs? Brian Rod says, Howdy, my neighbors. How are you going? Are you guys going to talk about TikTok? And I was telling a colleague earlier, this has got to probably be the worst government conspiracy of all time in history. Like, even the people who are just doing TikTok dance videos can see through this. The Congress can't agree on nothing, but they agree on this. And they make it all about China. But there's Chinese ports, there's Chinese hacks, there's Chinese chips, Taiwanese chips, Singaporean chips. CEOs. <laughs> <laughs> You guys look into Project Texas. They have already satisfied all the claims of the United States government. The government has all access to all TikTok data, even though they're saying they don't. Look up Project Texas. But who owns all this data? The United States company is called Oracle. And that CEO is Larry Ellison, which is another one of these doomsday people who owns actually a whole island in Hawaii. One of the richest people in the world. And they have the largest database management systems in the world, Oracle. So TikTok uses their cloud database management system to store all, it says it too, 100% of all U.S. data is stored within Oracle's cloud database management system. All. And who has access to that database management system? The United States government. So that means already the United States has all access and the Chinese government has zero. So it's already done. And yet they want to say, oh, we... Uh, we can't get the access to that data. Of course they can. Got nothing to do with that. Has to do with all that lobbying. TikTok shop, direct competitor for Amazon. Meta, direct competitor for Instagram and Facebook. And I think everybody can see through it. This ain't like new stuff. It's just interesting at this point. Every single person can see through it. The worst conspiracy of all time. <laughs> I personally think that uh, TikTok is great because it gives freedom of speech. Of course, it's controlled by China, but, um, you know, I mean, it's the alternative is that it's controlled by America. So I'm not really sure why Ben Shapiro and Glenn Beck and all these other, everybody is saying that America needs to own TikTok. That, that concerns me. It's like, yeah, you know, America owns all the social media platforms and news outlets and, uh, you know, we see where that got us. TikTok is the only place where, you know, it's not controlled by the American news media. So we, we actually get at least some real information from TikTok, even though China's taking all of our information and using it for whatever they want. Um, you know, at least uh, they're giving us real information. Like anything that happens in America and America tries to cover it up, people know about it because of TikTok. You didn't hear about it because of Fox News or CNN or anybody else. You heard about it because of TikTok. So, <clears throat> um, I actually like TikTok for that. You know, it's actually giving us a freedom of speech, which is what America is supposed to be based on. But it's sad that China is giving Americans freedom of speech more than the America's own news outlets. And yet, apparently, everybody's a part of it. Like I said, you know, all these big names that are starting to look like controlled opposition now, like Ben Shapiro and friends. It's like, why are, what, why do you care? And he actually says, too, Ben Shapiro says, yeah, we're on TikTok, so we use that platform. We actually use it to generate, you know, more followers and generate truth and all this. I was like, yeah, can you imagine what it would be like if it was ran by an American company? It's going to look exactly like Facebook and uh, uh, Instagram and Snapchat and all these other places, and it's just going to look just like that. And you won't know what's being filtered at that point because there is no other. It's just pure monopoly. Yeah. At some point, look, when the TikTok dancers know what's going on, you know it's not working. It ain't working no more. <laughs> hey, I see Call Me Daddy 187 is in the house. Ain't seen you in a while. Glad to see you drop it in. Welcome, welcome. This is my YouTube name, Garcia, yeah, Ryan Garcia. I don't even know what to think about that. I don't know if this is a government plant, like 
as another yeah because you know there's too many things <clears throat> going on right now <clears throat> we have the whole tiktok ban at the same time you have robert ryan garcia talking about all these bohemian grove 3.0 at the same time you have all this ai stuff there's like too many things going on right now to say left hand, right hand, whose hand? It's, I don't know. Maybe this is a new strategy just to bombard people with so much information they can't figure out anything. Yeah, eventually they're going to just trust the people in charge. Yeah, or AI. Generated yeah. videos. Yeah, the people in charge. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This is a lot of information to take in. Brian Rod says, what do you guys think about the solar eclipse happening soon? Yeah, we talked about that a couple week, a couple episodes ago. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty, really pretty. You want to see it? Yeah, because uh, I misspoke. I said it was April 4th, but it was April 8th. But uh, but it was a fool's joke, though. Yeah. I, April fool's it joke. It caused a lot of people to write comments, so it was great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, Don't be an April fool. You know, it's interesting. You know, you say that. I didn't even think about that. It is in April, so maybe maybe it's a mockery. Yeah. Fools. Four, eight is 12. You know, 12 is an interesting number. One and two is three. Three is an interesting number. But one is the loneliest one. Yeah. And then three and three is nine. And then you get the nines going to 45. And then you have a pentagon, which is 440, 545. Every angle is a 45 degree angle. Well, if you have six and nine, then you have Takurak. Mm. Takachi. Yeah. Mm. The grill. <laughs> No, Klaus says, what about Boeing's whistleblower? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's another thing. See, I was talking to a colleague earlier about, you know, Meta and Amazon are the biggest lobbyists. Meta is number nine, and Amazon is number seven. But Boeing's on that list, too. Boeing is a huge lobbyist. And, you know, they had all these problems with their 737 airplane. So, and how did most people get the information about the 737 airplane? Just through TikTok, right? So, of course, Boeing's got their fingers in this, trying to get rid of TikTok because it's how people learn about these problems. And so all these lobbyists are coming in. They have so many agendas. My personal feeling, though, the biggest competitor TikTok really has is Amazon. The whole on break of the TikTok store is flooding everything. And all these creators are making so much money from TikTok store, just regular people, that they're going to start promoting, buy it from TikTok instead of Amazon. And that's going to cause Drake. Direct, direct, listen to TikTok, uh, Takashi. <laughs> direct, I don't know the right word. It's just going to cause a problem for Amazon. <laughs> and so I think they have a lot of ambition to take down TikTok. And you wouldn't think so. That's what's funny about it. You think, oh, it's just a, it's just a uh, video app. But with this TikTok store, man, direct competition, that was the word, with Amazon. But yeah, Boeing's whistleblower, that's a whole... You know, more swatting. But you guys tell me what you guys think. What do you guys think about the whole thing? What do you guys actually think the motive of this is? Why did the government allow every congressman to agree on this? That's like the dumbest thing in the world. You're talking about the Boeing or you're talking about TikTok? All of it. It's because Boeing's connected to... Nobody would have known about Boeing without TikTok. Yeah, I know. That's, yeah. one of, that's what I was saying. Like, There's so many things that we learn from TikTok and then... The new, the American controlled news medias have to cover a story because everybody on TikTok knows about it. So it forces their hand. But America doesn't like that. They want things to be kept secret that they want to keep secret. Like the whole, uh, what was it called? Project Blackbird or Blackhawk or I can't keep with all the plot projects and paper clips and all that. But the, the, uh, where every news media is saying the same exact thing. Like Taylor Swift is not a psyop. And, you know, it's, it's just funny. And you put them all side by side and they're all saying the same thing. And then you have TikTok, which is showing you that they're doing all the same thing. And you have TikTok to show you a different side of things. And now you have all these news media saying, we need to get rid of TikTok. And I think it's very obvious. Yes, propaganda, money, sex, power, drugs. I, I, it's all my there. one question is, is why did they want all the congressmen to vote? Everybody, That's public information. Like That's the dumb thing. Just don't do that. At least put some puppetry opposition. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, at least put some opposition <laughs> out there, man. It's like nobody's going to believe everybody agrees on anything. That's just dumb. Like, this has got to be the worst conspiracy project. They're learning. Well, you think they've been doing it for long? They already learned. They're pretty good back yeah, in the day. You would think. But I think their head gets a little too big for their britches. And mm. they're not even supposed to put your britches on your head anyway. So it's like, 
when you get bagel swacked. Yeah, Noah Cloud <laughs> says the ADL is upset that the propaganda isn't working on the younger generation. Well, I wouldn't doubt it. And you know, this ain't helping. The younger generations can see through this too because they don't care about politics. They just know nobody agrees on anything. Yeah, Host was saying that, you know, if they, uh, if this ever happens, you know, you're going to cause the Gen Zs and younger, the alphas, to care about something. Yeah. They're going to rise up and do something. And I hope, I don't know what they're going to actually do. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to get the people who never cared to actually care to make sure you're not a congressman again. Yeah, but now that they care, it's like, well, what do we do now? Yeah, we don't know, but whatever it is, we don't want you. <laughs> uh, we're just going to have to play more video just, games then. Just break TikTok back. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dylan Mulvaney. Yeah, it's, it's crazy stuff. Call me daddy 187 says, Hey guys, great. Hey guys, great to see you. Great to see you too. Yeah. Uh, no, God says, I dropped a little infographic in the Discord or the Discord. Where, which, uh, which hashtag did you drop it in, Mr. Cloud? Then Brian Rod says, How about that UFC fighter talking about the child trafficking situation? Uh, USPS contracts with Amazon. Yeah, there's, there's been people talking about the trafficking situation for eons. You guys remember what happened with that, uh, was that called? Fr Bells of Freedom? Something, Freedom of Sound Bells? of Freedom? Sound of Freedom. That movie. And how hard that was to play in the theaters, you know, without theaters getting shut down. Another TikTok revealed thing that was going on. There was no other news media was talking about that. They were just, you know, throwing shade on the Sound of Freedom movie. But on TikTok, I saw hundreds of videos. I, it was like all I was seeing, all these videos, people after people filming things going on in the theaters when they're trying to watch Sound of Freedom. People like the UFC fighter trying to you know, shed light on what people like uh, Elon Musk and Bill Gates and all of them are doing with these kids. All oh, the kids that just, you know, Oprah Winfrey. Or not Oprah. Is it Oprah? Yeah, Oprah. You know, all these uh, children that went missing on her land in Hawaii. Anyway, so this movie's trying to show you something, and it's not even calling anybody out. It's not calling anybody out. But it's it's funny that you attack, you know, something that the elites care about, then they're going to attack back. So, yeah, so TikTok was how we knew that people were having complications trying to watch Sound of Freedom in the theaters all over America. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, again, there's just there's so many things that TikTok brings us that we would never know about if it wasn't for tiktok so it's one of those things once it's gone you're not gonna know what's going on we're just gonna think we know what's going on but we will never know what's really going on and tiktok doesn't shed light on everything either but at least they shed light on enough things to get us you know thinking noah cloud says israeli wants tiktok taken down the whistleblower had a tragic accident after testifying in court yeah, sounds like um, Putin stuff. So apparently this is what uh, was in the Discord. This was talking about U.S. views on top opinionated <coughs> Israel Hamas TikTok hashtags. On top of the list was free Pil Palestine was one of the biggest hashtags. Free Gaza, Palestine TikTok Clearly, if this was what was propagated on TikTok as the most popular hashtags, clearly there would be something Israel would want to get off of, uh, get TikTok off of the projection screen. So, yeah, and last year that would make sense around December. That was the talk of the town. Well, that is, unfortunately, when you have freedom of speech, freedom of the press, like what TikTok is at least providing, more freedom than uh, the American news sources. That's the unfortunate baggage that comes along with it. Yes, unfortunately, the Gen Zs were all going against Israel and siding with Hamas Be just because it was cool. It was a trend, and it probably still is, and that's unfortunate. That's what comes with the sound of freedom, I guess. Well, I was telling a colleague uh, earlier, you know, the National Guard already came out and said one of our largest vulnerabilities is the U.S. ports, and, you know, a colleague was talking about how there's all these children in these uh, card containers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, you know, maybe so with Sound of Freedom propagating everywhere. But they're all ran by Chinese software. America's not banning all these ports. You know, all the cyber attack stuff you guys heard from the FBI. Nobody's banning all these Cisco routers and all these tech companies building all these electrical devices. And T TSCM, the largest semiconductor in the world. 
They build NVIDIA's chips, Google chips, everybody's chips. Taiwan, under the one China policy, is China. But nobody's banning all these chips. But they want to say, hey, guys, China's taking over through TikTok. But yet there's Oracle and Project Texas. All that data, America government already has access to. They already have access to all of it through Oracle. So it's just, it's all just nonsense. Anyways, what, what else is on the uh, chat logs? Brian Rod says, do you guys respond to your Instagram inbox? Uh, not, not that much. If you, uh, if you want to message anything, message on Discord. And the Discord link is post uh, pinned up in the chat. Yeah, I saw somebody was running rampant in there and they got deleted. Yeah, so some somebody must have got their account hacked and they're just posting some kind of free gift card thing or something. <laughs> I gave them a chance to get it fixed because, you know, things happen, but they did it again. So I just assumed it was a hacker. Uh, Parody Bear says, label I video free Palestine. Palestine. <laughs> 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 Yeah, and that, that's like I said. Yeah, that's the unfortunate. You know, it's like, it's what comes along along with freedom, free speech, and TikTok. Unfortunately, is you get all the Gen Zs on this bandwagon that they don't have no clue what they're yelling or anything. <clears throat> the yeah. Anyway, people have lived in Palestine since 1948. Who cares who what land that belongs to? I mean, are we going to free the American lands back to the native people? Are we going to free the American lands from the native people back to the Olmecs? Well, Israel I mean, just, like, Israel didn't even have that occupied land until early 20s, and then they got more in, and then eventually in the 40s, that's when this whole Zionism started. Prime. We need this segregation for Israel, but before then, it was just the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, I know, but here on the American soil, before the natives had it, it was the Olmecs, and they took it from the Olmecs, so... And before the Olmecs, I mean, who knows, you know, based on whether you believe in evolution, who knows what kind of Neanderthals or, you know, Homo uh, habilis or whatever. I mean, who knows who actually lived on the soil. But if we're going to free the soil back to its original owner, there's no, it's one of those, uh, what's that called? The uh, never ending. Infinitive regress. Infinitive regress. There's no way to know who actually owned the land, so freeing it doesn't make any sense. But hey, you get enough kids on TikTok doing twerks and singing it, then everybody's going to be singing it. Well, it's like I've said before, you know, everybody has to accept. Back in the day when there was a lot more segregation before the internet, everything was brutal and people could hide their brutality because nobody could see it. The only reason our world is nicer today is because people can see it. If they couldn't see it, they'd be just as gangster. You already know that. No cameras, no web, no live, no hope. Everybody's going to be brutal. Especially the police. Everyone. The governments, everything. The only reason the governments have as nice as it is is because people can see it. And so we live in a world where they're just forced now to be more compatibilistic. There's just no choice. If you want to keep the illusion. Of course, heavy totalitarian governments don't care if you see it. But like America or Europe or... Even Russia, they want to propagate the idea, you know, this is still free and everything's okay. Take the, take the inter internet away, take the cameras away, and you're going to see just as brutal as they ever been. And so why, why are we shocked that the old days, the ancient days, were brutal? Of course it was. Well, it's not that. It's the people in the Israel-Hamas propaganda, the cotton that propaganda cycle that America has been throwing in our, in our faces through their media, the American owned media stations. Um, you know, they're saying that Hamas owned the Palestinian land before Israel did before the Israelites, the modern Israelites, whoever they are did. I mean, to, a, to an extent that's true, but to an extent it's not. I mean, the, yeah, the people that the, the original Jews that lived there, you know, way, way back in the real day of the real Jews actually existing, those Jews were on that land, but they, they took it from uh, the, uh, the Canaanites that was actually belonged to Canaan people. Now, I don't know if those people are existing today either. After Israel took it from Canaan, the Canaanites, uh, and then Israel eventually, you know, they disappeared off the, well, history. And then the people from, you know, the east, the Arabs from the east, and then the people from Ashkenaz and um, Spain, 
1948, they all moved to the land of Israel. So I don't know, you know, again, you have to prove descent before you can prove that they actually own that land for that long in history. But the Hamas people didn't own it any time before them either. So it's like this weird, the people are just playing with terms. And anytime people play with terms, it makes me feel funny. In 2024, we just can't play any of these games anymore. Everybody's got cameras. And so at the end of the day, everybody wants somewhere to live. I get that. That's fair, right? We all need some place to live. And we all need citizenship because we need a government to continue our freedom illusions, whatever those rights are. And that's fair too. And so I say, why not just let, you know, find an equal medium? And I think that's probably people's biggest problem with Israel. It's like you are forcing them all into this little strip over here in Gaza. And you're forcing people to help them, like get in. And you're just forcing them on this corner. And it's like, they just, just like you. But then Israel's propagation is, yeah, but Hamas is in there. And they're a bunch of terrorists. And they're trying to destroy our way of living. And it's like, there's no winning here. It's like, I get why everybody's complaining. Everybody just wants to live somewhere. But now you have these radicals. And who knows who's causing it? Because, yeah, you know, like Osama bin Laden or something. The propagation is that the CIA was working with Osama bin Laden years before <laughs> He started with the Taliban and he was trained by the CIA and it was all inside CIA op so that the government later could use Osama bin Laden as a justification for everything else they did. And who knows, maybe the Hamas is the same way. Maybe the Mossad is the same way. And it's all just integration of a larger collusion of the CIA, which it's all just a larger collusion. So America can control that area because who is creating these <clears throat> oppositions? Clearly, Gaza's normal citizens do not want all this craziness. They just want to live like anybody. And Israel's the same way. But if you have these weird people that pop up and say, yeah, well, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to bomb everybody. Yeah, of course, everybody's going to have a problem. And there's no way to fix it because you don't know if the government's doing it. Like the American government, they could be the one literally doing it. Yeah. And now the Houthis have us under their heel. Yeah, they're, that's what they're getting they're rid of smushes. They have us right where they want us. Man, if, if we don't do what they say... They may actually kill us all. And they're over there cutting like the fiber lines for data. And it's like, how do they know any of this? Somebody's got to be telling them this information. They knew because the gods told them. Yeah, United States. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, let's be real here. And so it, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's difficult. And I can understand people's frustrations, but you got to see the geopolitical conspiracy, which is these arbitrary offshoots can't have all this knowledge there's got to be somebody telling these people something not just the houthis but the hamas or anybody and all these little shoots that cause all this disruption it's not like they're that innovative and they got all this money and they can do all this stuff somebody's doing something and they're and, and so yeah america over here or europe or any other country china or russia acting like they have no involvement and that's just stupid well, Jimbo Jane Alberto says, had a thought. If Spotify uses its AI to learn what kind of music is in right now and what people are listening to, then they start a record company and make exactly that kind of music. So basically, Spotify could take all the music that's in right now and create its own music with AI and just become number one. I'm surprised nobody else has actually done that already. Well, they probably are. It's just how would we know? Like if there's this new artist... You know, at this point with text to video, how would you know? It's like they show these concerts and all this stuff, but it's, how would you know? Because it's all potato quality, right? And at that point, you don't know if that's real or not. It just look like some figure. And, uh, well, audio, you really don't know. That's pretty perfected at this point. Well, if you never do a concert or the concerts keep conveniently getting canceled or whatever yeah. for weather reasons or whatever, then yeah, I mean, you could literally make it out like Justin Bieber is still singing songs, even though he's dead. Yeah, or you can say that, you know, make the whole propaganda that this is an indie artist that doesn't believe in the corporate uh, capitalism and they're just going to be, you know, in their room doing their own thing, producing their own music against uh, uh, record companies. And so they never have to do shows or anything because they're trying to be this like rebellion person against the record companies. Yeah, it oh. could be all AI. Yeah, it'd be over. Mm -hmm. This is my YouTube name says, when do you think we will begin to see the effect of de-dollarization? Oh, probably 10, 15 years from now. And, you know, I'm saying that of what I know about the financial markets and the only reality that anybody has to think about that is BRICS. Uh, but, yeah, that's going to take a lot longer than 
you know, all this hyperbole. I know it's coming down the pipeline, but it's going to be a collusion with America. It's not going to be a segregation of America. America is going to be, it, the, I think the bigger plan is for America and the world to be more cooperative, not a, not a, a segregation. And BRICS eventually will have its uh, downfall. That's what I believe. But of course, many people don't because they support anything against America. Like TikTok. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> No God says, once the Comanche got horses from the Spanish, they wiped out every tribe they didn't like. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. They were all brutal. Everybody was doing that, though. Every country was wiping everybody out. <laughs> they had an opportunity. They would take it. They'd wipe them all out. Every country. From Genghis Kong to the, the, uh, the Romans. They didn't care. From the Minoans to the My, uh, Mycenaeans. <laughs> <laughs> Parody Bear says, inflation now. Well, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, according to the reports, if you believe the PPI and the CPI and all that stuff, uh, it's lower now. It's they say it's uh, the core CPI is showing that, which is the consumer price index, is showing that right now it's at like three four. And they're saying inflation is like three eight, which it used to be about six or nine percent, uh, like two years ago. So it's like, if you believe these pay, these numbers, it's a lot better now. The CPAs believe the CPIs. Well, uh, the consumer price associates <laughs> the uh accountants but you know it's funny the united states government irs finally just came out with their finally which is weird a competitor to turbo tax you know and i was like you should have been doing that for decades ago but now they're saying now we'll give you a free service so now they're going to be ai operated yeah, that's why it's new that's what i'm saying it's so weird to me that anybody believes half this stuff Everybody knows the government could be doing our taxes anyway. Yeah, Why are they forcing us to do it anyway? It's we're stupid. one of the few countries in the world that the government doesn't do the taxes. Uh, most other countries already do all the taxes for the people. Now, maybe it's just for the illusion of free will. So it's like you don't have to pay your taxes. Yes, you do, but you don't really have to if you really don't want to. Maybe it's just part of the illusion. And it's like they're playing ignorance. It's like, look, we don't really know what you made or didn't make or anything. Look, so you don't have to really do it. You could get away with it for a little bit. If you're a Schedule C... If it's not Schedule C, like if you're a business or, or if you are a, a independent contractor, fair enough. Government can't see all the 1090. Well, they eventually will get a 1099 copy, but they don't know your deductions. They don't know your costs. All those things you spend, unless they get into your bank accounts, they don't know what is business cost, what is not. So that's fair enough. That's complicated. But if you're just like normal people, they go get a job. They get, they get their W-2s. And it's all just base work. The government absolutely knows every single thing on that. The only thing they may not know, which most people don't claim, because your standard deduction is greater than itemization, is charity. But you can't claim both. You either can do itemized deductions or standard deduction. And the standard deduction is so high now, so you're taking standard deduction. At that point, the government knows everything. So unless you're a business or an independent contractor, there's absolutely no reason why the government isn't doing the taxes. Yeah, now they could, I mean, they could really just get AI to do it. So it's not like, oh, we have to hire more people to do all this extra work. No, you can just get AI on it. Hey, I can do it all for you. I'm sure that's what's happening now. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. No, Cloud says, I think we're seeing de-dollarization now. They're getting ready to move over to digital unless they're push unless there's pushback. There's always a group of funding the smaller gangs. In, in Haiti, there was a single billionaire funding all the gangs. Yeah, but I don't think that's de-dollar, like U.S. dollar, de-U.S. dollarization. I think it's just de-physical dollarization <laughs> we're getting all these deeds whatever i don't even know what to call it you're just getting away from physical currency it's not like digital dollars is still not dollars of course it's dollars it's all the same thing well he also says there's hologram anime girl singers already yeah, that, you know memes may be the new currency in the future who has the best memes and be then cool. you're trading memes be cool yeah be like pokemon cards yeah and dragon balls but if you're talking about the dollar <laughs> i uh I don't see de-dollarization for another 10 years. You're going to, you know, of course, progression. But if things are on its trajectory, yeah, it's still going to take a while. It's not like it's going to happen in the next year or two. Now, I do believe there's going to be some kind of weird stuff that if Trump becomes president, I talked about this last week. If Trump becomes president, I do believe the globalists will use that as a way to do an exit strategy. I do think they're going to collapse the markets and the crypto markets and use Trump as the Trojan horse to say, here it is, folks. And I don't know if, I don't think Trump actually is cognitive of that, 
but I think they don't like Trump. So if Trump becomes president, they're going to use an opportunity to let you guys keep the bags and they're going to sell all the bags on you. And they're going to blame Trump. It's like, see, he was a bad president. Everything collapsed on Trump. Trump is bad. And, you know, there's nothing Trump can do about it. He's going to try to print his way out and that's only going to cause inflation and we're going to even be more bad. He could use TikTok. In fact, I'm surprised he doesn't buy TikTok. He can barely pay for that $453 million bond he has to put up just to appeal what they're doing in New York. Yeah, I'm not sure why he's letting all that stuff happen either, but that, that's between him well, and if his he's, you know, If these elites government. want him to be in this position, that's what they're doing. Jimbo Jane Alberto says, Did you hear that Spotify will translate Joe Rogan's voice into Dutchland and other languages in real time? I wouldn't be surprised that Spotify does that because they specify with audio, so they're probably really good at audio manipulation. It'll be fun to see what comes of it. Unless you know those languages, how do you know what in the world they're saying? Maybe they're putting words in your mouth in another language. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, who knows? Well, the bilinguists will know. Yeah, but they just may believe that's what you said. No, if they can hear you say it in English and oh, if they, if English they can hear, it, yeah, if they can, if they're bilingual, yeah. yeah. No, Cloud says, I think that's the same kind of technology the UN uses, real-time speech translation. Yeah, but don't they have translators? Like in, in their earpiece, is there actually a real person translating real-time? Like a human translator? Yeah, I didn't know they were using AI to do that. That's, that's interesting too. But uh, Jimbo Jane Alberto says the language barrier will never be a problem in a year or so. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. But then we have to trust the translator. Like if it's AI translating something, like if I go to some, you know, Japanese guy and he starts saying whatever, and then Google says, well, this is what they said. I have to trust two levels. I have to trust what they just told me they were saying. And then my response, I have to trust that Google's actually replicating my response to that person. So there's two levels of trust. And I don't know. I don't know Japanese. Yeah. And you have to trust that the Japanese guy isn't just lying to you too. Yeah. Somebody. Yeah. There's too many layers here. So it's difficult. <laughs> it's, it's like we're. We're trusting this god, the intermediary guy called AI. It's analogous. Yeah, it's, it gets difficult. Jimbo Jane Alberto also says uh, real time translation. You could even talk with the penguin I hear. Mm. The Linux penguin. I, the penguin classics. Mm. <laughs> Noah Cloud says don't forget to include any drug sales and theft on taxes. Oh, uh, yeah, they do tell you that. If you steal anything, please report it on your tax. Any gains. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because the government doesn't know. Yeah, those are taxable events. Yeah. It's not charity. Mm-hmm. Brian Rod says, doesn't the government have an online currency already? They do, but it, it's, uh, you know, CBDCs work on what's called retail and wholesale. Yeah. So when governments have to transfer from banks to banks, everything is on a digital ledger already, of course. Like when the Federal Reserve, that's why March 11th was such a big deal. Uh, that's when the, it's called, I think, uh, the bank term loaning program. It was an initiative that the Federal Reserve uh, allowed to help banks not file into, go into another banking collapse. So what they would do is they would allow them, those banks to place a certain amount of money in the Federal Reserve, and then they would gain a small amount of interest within that swap, it was like an arbitrage. And so at some point, the banks would actually make a little bit of profit doing that. But they just ended that bank term loaning, I think, on the 11th of March. But how did those banks transfer money from Federal Reserve to the banks? It's through digital currency, of course. It's not because they're transporting millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in cash. So, yeah, they do have a digital format of the dollar already, but that's on a wholesale level, not retail level. Like you and I don't have digital dollars. Eventually, when you hear about retail CBDCs, you know, that, that's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, here soon, banks won't need to hire drivers for those trucks to drive the yeah, cash. Yeah, yeah there, there won't <clears throat> be no cash. Yeah. Yeah. No Cloud says, POTUS, Patsy of the United States. Acronym. SCOTUS. Is that an acronym? For the Supreme Court. Oh, yeah. Scrotus. <laughs> <laughs> Noah Cloud says, the toilet of Babel, where we all sound the same. Yeah. And yeah, we all flush equally. Yeah, we're hearing blind. We don't hear anything different. No, you can't hear nothing when you're spinning that toilet. Yeah, we don't discriminate. No. <laughs> <laughs> the scrotus. Yes. That is the, the scrotus. <laughs> well, what's interesting, another thing that I was talking to my colleague earlier is, uh, we have been talking a lot about that open AI Sora text-to-video 
uh, technology, which everybody knows about. But there was an interview from the West, uh, from Wall Street Journal, where they were interviewing the chief technical officer of uh, OpenAI, which runs all of that tech. And they asked her, will nudes be cut off? Can people, will people not be able to make nudity with OpenAI, Sora, text to video tech? And she said, it's not off the table. What about nudity? I'm not sure. Okay, here are the basics. The AI model analyzed lots of videos and learned to identify objects and actions. When given a text prompt, it creates a scene by defining the timeline and adding detail to each frame. What makes this AI video special compared to others is how smooth and realistic it looks. And then there was that video of, well, us. The woman on the left looks like she has maybe like 15 fingers in one of the shots. Hands actually have their own way of, of motion. And it's very difficult to simulate the motion of, of hands. In the clip, the mouths move, but there's no sound. So is audio something you're working on with Sora? With Sora specifically, not in this moment, but we will eventually. Those videos are 720p, 20 seconds long. How long does it take to generate those? It could take a few minutes, depending on the complexity of the prompt. So we don't know what it's going to look like exactly when we make it available eventually to the public, but we're trying to make it available at similar cost eventually to what we saw with DALI. You said eventually. When is eventually? I'm hoping yeah, definitely this year, but could be a few months. What are things that just you won't be able to generate with this? Well, we haven't made those decisions yet, but I think there will be consistency on our platforms. What about nudity? I'm not sure. You can, you can imagine that you know, there are creative settings in which artists might want to have more control. I think that's going to be interesting when the public gets access to hyper manipulation. Yeah, that'd be fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what they're going to use for the education in uh, middle schools and uh, kindergarten Why classes. Not? Education Why is not? like, all right, show us two white men. And it's not going to show any white men. Well, it's not Google. Yeah, OpenAI is still pretty consistent with that. I use it for photo generation. and there's, They still allow everything equally. So they's, they're not colorblind. They still see blacks and whites. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this ain't Google. Google has that problem. So yeah, Gemini. yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use Google for anything. Ulysses Burgos said, "Heard of Jesus Christ, Millennial Reign, and Satan's Little Season?" Yes, I've heard of it. Yes, I've heard of it also. What would you like to know? Would you like to learn about the uh, apocalypse of uh, Peter? <laughs> 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 hey, you have to uh, feed more fancy. But while you guys are feeding that fancy, another interesting. <laughs> Every time we laugh, the table is like, it's like eh, eh, it sounds like a penguin's laughing. I, I think I'm starting to hear that penguin you were talking about, Jimbo. I don't know if you guys saw this week, uh, waiting for you guys' depthness on this apocalypse. I've been waiting. I told Kalik also earlier, I've been waiting for somebody to do this. And Trump <laughs> did it. So this past week on Truth Social, well, there was this uh, hearing. And this hearing, they were showing all of Biden's uh, cognitive issues where he slipped up saying all this stuff. Well, then, so the Democrats made a video of Trump and all his slip ups. So Trump went on his social media, uh, True Social, and said, yeah, those are all AI generated videos. You can't do that, Joe Biden. And so I've been waiting because he's going to be the first of many. Now, since text to video is so good, you, at some point they've realized you're not going to know. You're just not going to know. And he's like, yep, uh, I didn't say any of that. That's all AI. And then pretty soon Biden's going to say, yeah, I can, I'm can. i coherent. It's just AI that shows that I'm not. And then all these politicians say, I never voted for the TikTok ban. That was AI who did that. And then Epstein's going to come back from the dead and say, hey, I didn't do anything. That was all AI. I never even died. Well, Biden's already making those claims without any yeah, kind of yeah. <laughs> he's He's actually saying stuff like, I actually closed the border. Trump was the one who opened the border. Hey, I actually have, am helping the economy. Look at how much the economy's grown since I've been president. Hey, Trump did all this. Trump did that. Trump did that. Trump did this. Trump did that. I did this. I did. And he's, he's just making claims like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> he doesn't care. Yeah. I mean, all he has to do is say AI has made it, but he doesn't even care about that. He's like, uh, "It's just everything you know is fake, except for me. I'm the r most realest person in the planet." But what's funny is if the White House wants to clean all this up, 
They can use their collusion with Google or whatever, delete all those other footages, make AI generated footage of him speaking properly, and then put it all in. And people say, no, Biden does all this slip up. And they're like, where's it at? We don't, we don't even know what you're talking about. And you're going to go through and it's all like Biden's a genius. <laughs> it's like, wow, it's some an illusion. Yeah, but <laughs> this is a, this is a, um, a double edged sword yeah, because yeah, Bill Clinton's going to say, I still stand by it. Yeah. And then we're going to, we're going to be like, we have AI generated footage of you with the desk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, that's right. We're going to see uh, yeah. like secret cameras. Yeah. In this full nudity. We got nanny vision. We got nudity. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all on AI. We generated it for you. No, it's, this is real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what we'll claim is that that's actually real. Yeah. So what you're claiming is fake. So now this is what he is. Yeah. And that's, what's interesting. I was waiting. But Trump was the first one, and it doesn't surprise me it was Trump, but it was the first <laughs> person to finally do it, and now I know here's going to come in the rainfalls of everybody saying, no, that's AI. It's AI, mm -hmm. man. And so let's be ready for that. <laughs> I'm excited. Just backtracking a little bit, Noah Cloud also posted something else, but because I'm actually in the comment section, I'm not reading the screen until just now. I looked over at the screen, and I saw Noah Cloud actually said something else, too, that the chats did not put in there. So... Mm. Um, if you guys, I, we say this all the time, but I'm just going to repeat myself. If I skip something, I'm not trying to, it's because the chats deleted it or it didn't put it, make it in the chat. So just repost it and keep reposting it. If it doesn't, yeah, if it never lets you repost it, then yeah, you know, you, you know, something that something is not letting you say it. Cause no cloud right before he said the toilet of Babel, he said, uh, he saying he thinks the government is, uh, he, he said Bitcoin is secretly a government, uh, made currency well it could be sure i think there's like people who have these old apples and there's like this text file in there talking about bitcoin and it's like uh that that's strange that's there and yes uh, who knows it wouldn't surprise me that yeah. cia created that off the record i think that too well it is interesting that there's this wallet for satoshi that's been there since 2008 and somehow this man has the hands of steel and hasn't cashed <clears throat> one bitcoin it's worth billions, not one. Who has that kind of discipline <laughs> except for the government? And the Iron Fist, which uh, is a strategy. Just the government. <laughs> 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 I mean, who can do this thing? Iron Claw. Yeah, Iron Pizza. <laughs> but uh, that, that has always been, and you know, of course, people say, oh, he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that, that sounds like CIA stuff. CIA be swatting people all the time. And so, yeah, that that is the weirdest thing to me. No human probably has that kind of discipline to hold it for. But now it's going on sixteen years, not one. You can cash out one. Lashia, yeah. You the said Mashika. Lashia, <laughs> <laughs> the CIA. Yeah. This is my YouTube name. Says so. Is the world gonna end or what? I got things to do. Y'all stocked up. I don't even have a candle. Ugh. Uh, I don't think the world's going to end. I think it's just going to transfer into these cow videos that colleague was showing earlier. They're already in the matrix. The cows are. Yeah. Take a look at this. This cow is wearing a VR headset, and it's so unusual. So what is the purpose of this, and what is shown to these cows? In Russia, farmers put VR sets on their cows during the winter season. This is because when it snows, cows can't be let out on the green fields to graze, which stresses them and decreases their milk yields. So Russian farmers put their VR sets on their cows, and bright green fields are shown to them which relaxes the cows and increases their milk yields by 22%. Yeah, I don't think the world's going to end. I think we're all just going to eventually turn into these cow matrixes. Like, it's slow. We're not there yet, but eventually we're just going to live in the matrix. Yeah, so keep going to work. Yeah, until it transfers. It's a slow progression. Eventually yeah, you'll just yeah. be there. <laughs> Crispy says, how can we be sure that host and colleague aren't AI generated? Uh, it's to the point where we can't trust anything we see or hear. You guys have been saying that uh, since the beginning. But we can't. We can't prove it. We don't, we don't, there's no way for us to tell. Now, if we are AI, I think we're pretty good then. Like, this is a high level of AI. <laughs> well. <laughs> like, at least generation. Like, our hands are still, <clears throat> you can see our hands. We don't have, like, 10 hands. I've been reluctant to say this and do this, but I think they're leaving me no choice. That There, there is one thing we can do that AI can't do. Mm. The Three Stooges. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that would be difficult. The hands are difficult. 
freaky fast. Like I was seeing a new to Taco John's. You know, you guys have already seen the uh, Sora videos, the text, the video stuff. But they just made some new, new ones, and they still are saying, you know, the hands are still difficult. There was one video that looked like they had sixteen hand fingers or something. The hands are very still very difficult. Well, if you have six hand, six fingers, and six toes, you might just be a giant. Yeah. Everything else was good, though. Well, this is my YouTube name. Says colleague is from the past, and host is from the future. Maybe you know we're both time travelers. <laughs> it's just you know he's from back in the day, and I'm from the future, coming back to the present, and he's from you know year three thousand nine hundred fifty-seven billion, and he came here. <laughs> oh wait, maybe we're swapped. He's from the past and i'm from the view that's why the the opposite <laughs> fascinate us so much. it might be yeah, that might be true either way we have met in the present <laughs> that's yeah. possible and now we bring you ear candy yes we bring you toilet time tv ulysses burgos says i saw the chat gpt robot scary on what do you see right now I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great, can you put them there? Of course. All right, so how do you think you did? I, I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. Yeah, figure AI. We actually talked about it a couple weeks ago. It's the only robot that... And see, people get it confused because they're only correlating with OpenAI. But this, if you look it up, Jeff Bezos, Microsoft, OpenAI, NVIDIA, all are investing in this one robot, Figure AI. So it's not just ChatGPT or OpenAI. It's all of them. All of them. And so that, that to me is very interesting. And, you know, colleague made a correlation that, you know, looks kind of like the Tesla bot. And it does. And so it seems like they're trying to make a direct competitor because that Tesla bot is pretty compelling. It's pretty realistic. And this robot is very similar to the Tesla bot. Noel Cloud says, if all our history is digitally recorded, then they can retroactively edit history. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. That's why I stick to the hard copies we for talked now. We talked about this many, many times too. Once AI has the ability to moderate dissertations, moderate education, moderate textbooks, there is nothing stopping them from slowly, of course, slowly changing little things one by one and generation after generation by the third or fourth generation, nothing is going to be the same as it once was. And they can do that and nobody would know. Yeah, nobody would be the wiser. Yeah, not after three or four generations. Noah Cloud says that guy in Britain is still digging in the landfill looking for his old Bitcoin hard drive. <laughs> yeah. This is all on the Unreal Engine. We have an we have Apple Vision Pro welded on our face. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, it we were be. we were born with AI eyes because we we're already at that next level of evolution. Yeah. Yeah. And they deleted the history of when that transfer actually happened. So the, the, we don't we don't actually know that. The best thing to do is just gouge your eyes out. 
Yeah, I guess then you could tell us. But then again, you know, we could already figure that out because if that was the case, blind people should be, they should be able to avoid the simulation because they can't see anything. People who are born blind or without eyes, people who are born without eyes. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it's just like the matrix. It's not, it's bypassing our eyes completely. It's just a chip in our brain or the plug, like, mm -hmm. you know, the matrix. So everything you hear, taste, smell, all of it is chicken. It's possible. I guess whenever they take those babies to clean them up, maybe they're doing something. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Ulysses Burgo says, when is the three days of darkness? <laughs> April 8th. It's more like three hours of darkness, but. Yeah, unless you're referring to something else. Yeah. Jimbo Jane Alberto says, if you're, if you are only inside your city all your life, then hypothetically the whole world outside of your city could have not existed and everything is just streamed to you. If they like bomb USA out of existence, then just keep uploading as usual from USA. But it's all, it's AI made all of it. Yeah, they could do that now. It would have been more difficult a long time ago. But now, yeah, with text to video, yeah, you could create that in minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Other countries, now, of course, America would be gone in your theory. You know, this theoretical, America would be absolutely gone. But the rest of the world would never know it. Yeah, because AI could continue propagating these live feeds and everything to the rest of the world. And then they could have the stock market crash and all this fake economy going on, which have alters the whole world. But theoretically, yeah, America wouldn't even be here. Yeah, it makes you wonder if China's even real. Maybe China got smashed i don't think that's the know. case now because uh there's just a lot of personal experience but i think now the technology is here for future generations to have this problem uh, i think at some point because there's still old people from like the you know 1920s 1930s they're still alive but yeah as time goes on like the alphas and such yeah i i don't know how they're going to deal with reality at all I heard that there's studies coming out now, I guess, that the alpha kids are actually all coming up with either eye disease oh, yeah. or yeah, yeah. nearsightedness, they, their eyes, because they're looking at their phone, their eyes aren't being able to develop. If they would just let their bodies grow and develop past the age of 18 and then start looking at the phone, then it'd be fine. But yeah, people that are born with a smartphone in their in their hand, it's, yeah, it's over before it even started. Yeah, they say they're... They have higher proclivities to be born with nearsightedness, and uh, they have a hard time seeing farther away. And it's because your eyes start adapting to being efficient. And if this is the predominant form of your view, then your eyes are just going to have efficiency for this. And because they don't see far away as much as the nearsight, your eyes just start acclimating to that. And it's interesting, and I think it's going to get worse. Like if we put something on our eye, like on our face, like this close, it's going to get even worse. If we take it off, we're literally going to be blind. Well, that's if, yeah, eye disease doesn't destroy your brain. Yeah, first. eventually, yeah, it's just going to kill <clears throat> It's just going to destroy your eyes at all. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, if your eyes are actually gone, like if somehow it evolves so it's like, we don't need to make eyes anymore, then yeah, then you're hyper simulation. Yeah, you're going to look like uh, an alien. And you need you have a big head with big, it looks like sunglasses, but those aren't really, those are just vision goggles just built into your scalp. And you're going to have a little mouth because you don't really need to talk much. You have a little nose because, you know, you have little lungs, little body. You're going to be green or grayish from not being in the sun as much because you're indoors all the time. Three fingers because that's all you really need. We don't need five anymore. Um, you know, what else? I mean, you're not going to need a whole lot of muscle. Yeah, yeah but I don't know if I'm going to see any of that. That sounds pretty abstract to me. But, yeah, in the future generations, maybe it become normal. Or, you know, sometimes people make uh, the Simpsons come to life. They put them in real life or like the Rugrats. Maybe that's what someone did with one of the anime characters. They just did it with, and it, you know, the real life generation was alien. -like. Well, at least sometimes they're cool. Like they come up like one punch man or something, you know, give them really super powers and stuff. And, you know, then it defeats all that infantile stuff. It becomes masculine, but. <laughs> yeah. Telekinetic. Yeah. Teleka toilet. <laughs> Telekazam. <laughs> Telekazoo. <laughs> a parody bear wants to know what word is missing from this poem he's writing. Yeah, let's song. examine it all together now here in the chat. Sympathy for the devil. Please allow me to introduce myself. Oh, oh Kos already read. I mean, colleague already read this. Yeah, he reposted it. He really wants to know which word is missing. I am a man of wealth and taste. I've been around for a long, long time. Stole many a man's soul i assume that's time that was like the fluid thought it yeah, it could be generations what is the answer mr parody you're mocking me aren't you jimbo jane alberto says elon musk once said humans are the bootloader for ai 
it could be, you know, it could be, it could be that, you know, like a BIOS, it's a basic input output system and it's what allows the computer to post so it can uh, have your pre-operating system test post and then eventually it can start running the operating system. So maybe, maybe humans are like that beginning, like, you know, when you turn on an old computer and it goes, doo, 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 boop, and then it loads windows. Uh, maybe that's what humans are. Humans are that little beginning thing where you see the black screen and all that jive and then it loads windows. Maybe humans is all that little beginning stuff and then we can load into the real world. Yeah, I mean, you could use many analogies. Like you can say we are the mom or the parent. We are the parents for AI. We are giving birth to AI. Yeah, it's gonna and these are the birth pangs. It's going to loop one day. <laughs> we eventually become the child. Well, yeah, the AI will be a parent too to something day, else. Yeah, yeah. One day. And it it too will experience its own birth pangs, not pains, but pangs. So somebody said it's year, yeah. A parody, no, it's a year. Yeah, um, that, that doesn't make any sense. Been around year. a long, long year. Yeah, that reminds me of that Office episode where it's like, "I love you, Long Tim." And Michael Scott was typing on the computer. He's making the computer speak for him. Mm. I don't know. Explain that. I, I does it have to be year? Time is a year is just a off break of the generalization of time. I don't. To me, it just sounds fluid to say a long, long time. Chris P said, "My theory is that the Antichrist will be an AI cyborg who will implement one world digital currency, the technology for the mark of the beast, and the end of days are currently being implemented." Yeah, a lot of people think that. I don't personally prescribe to that, but I know a lot of people think that. But well, we actually talked about it. Uh, the <laughs> the image <laughs> of the beast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We talked about that. You know, in the, you, if you if anybody has ever seen those rapture movies, I saw a long time ago, or I guess a long year ago, um, I saw those uh, rapture movies based on the 18th century idea. And they have this Franco Macaluso who's in the goggles. You put the goggles on. They're probably Apple Vision Pros. And you have this guy in there, the sales guy, who's trying to sell you something. And, uh, yeah, if you don't take his mark, then you are going to get violated. And that's what happened every single time. My difficulty with all of this is that, enough, you know, me and Colin, I'm not going to go through this debate again, but like last week. Arbitrary. Well, it's technology. <laughs> Arbitrage. It, the only reason any generation or civilization feels like there's an apocalypse arising is when there's this big segregational gap between technology and humans. That's when humans get scared because humans always want to feel like I'm in control, right? I'm the one controlling the puppet strings. But when technology starts getting too big, too fast, that's when a large group of the population don't know what's going on because technology is too advanced now, right? And, and I get that makes sense. It's too fast, too soon, and nobody can learn that fast. You get scared because you don't know what in the world's going on. And this happens in every civilization throughout history. And then eventually, in previous generations, somebody would come along and try to wipe it out. And then those people would raise up and then you had to start all over again, right? And it always happens. But now we live in an age where you can't really wipe it out. It's too difficult. It's too worldwide. Before we were isolated to little groups, right? Little cities <clears throat> where you could come over there and burn the Library of Alexandria to the ground, right? You can't do that today. You just can't get rid of technology anymore. And uh, I think that's what makes it even more scary. But I just see that these are analogous constructs. So it doesn't make me feel like I'm so special, like this is the year of the dragon, which it actually is the year of the dragon if you believe in numerology. But <laughs> <laughs> I will say, yeah, technology is a lot more advanced than it's ever been. But and again, especially depending on where you're getting this idea of an apocalypse anyway, if you're reading a specific... Uh, apocalyptic literature you probably want to figure out what in the world the actual author meant to convey to his actual readers because they obviously believe that the apocalypse was actually in their generation that's why they were writing look these things are about to happen every single one of these apocalyptic uh sources so to take what they meant to their original readers and put it into our modern context i feel like it's robbing them of their meaning but that's just me. Yeah, and in this context specifically, because he's saying the Antichrist. So yeah, it really has this Christian connotation. And yeah, that, that's very particular, and you have to stay within the, the reins 
of Christianity because you're mentioning the Antichrist. And, uh, but I'm saying, I, I just like almost all civilizations, especially as time has progressed since the Romans, everybody's always felt like, you know, this is a bad time. You know, things could really end here. And you see that kind of feeling in literature after the first century quite often. And you have to ask yourself, why? Why does everybody feel like that? Like, think about, uh, you know, think about how the Muslims felt when the Catholics were trying to get rid of them all. And think about how, you know, World War One and World War Two, and, you know, all this stuff that everybody probably thought these were end things. And But this is all Genghis Kong, anything. You always see these feelings that this is about as bad as it's going to get. The question is, is why does everybody feel that way? And now why do you feel that way? Well, this is what happens like with Nostradamus. You know, he wrote a bunch of blasé, hyper generic prophecies. And uh, you could apply them to literally anything. And then when fires started showing up in France, people started saying, wait a second, he prophesied this would happen. So everything else in his literature was basically trash, trash except for this one prophecy that he made that fires would show up and then they applied it immediately to France. And so they interpreted it for their time, their context, and they were using it for political grab and gain and, or against political grab and gain, you know, during the, uh, was that the French revolution and all that. And then the next generation is going to take that same prophecy and use it for their political power. And I say, you know, just respect the author, you know, Nostradamus probably was trying to convey some kind of message to his original hearers. And, uh, yeah, but the ancient literature we're talking about with like Antichrist and all those things, man of lawlessness, those actually are very specific. Those Nostradamus is very generic. The ap actual real apocalyptic literature that predates Nostradamus by, you know, 1500 years, those actually, uh, those are actually very specific. So they were, they would be undismissible. Like you, you couldn't just say, well, maybe it's this. No, it was so specific that there's. It had to be a one correlation, one to one correlation. Otherwise, it was all trash. Um, so either it was real or not. But anyway, that, that's all I'm saying. You, know, you have to, if you respect the original authors at all, which some people don't and some people do, and then some people claim to respect the original authors, but they really don't. The goal should be to try to figure out what the actual original author meant and why was he writing it to his original audience? How would they have understood these terms? Because the, the, the symbols found in the apocalyptic literature, uh, you know, the, the author didn't have to use those specific symbols. There's many symbols, but he used specific symbols because he knew his audience knew what in the world he was saying. Anyway, yeah, I've actually been reading the, uh, <laughs> the Hindu scriptures lately, the uh, Rig Veda specifically, and you have the four Vedas. And the Rig Veda has a lot of uh, symbology in there. You know, Indra, which, you know, you don't hear about Vishnu or any of those gods until way later. So those are evolved gods. But the the main god in the original Hindu scriptures, the Vedas, were Indra and uh, Agni and Syra. Uh, and Agni was the fire gods. Indra is like this lightning bolt. But Indra seems to be the, the main head honcho. And they... They're, they're killing other gods, they're killing other people, and they demand sacrifice or the soma, you know, this drink that they drink. And I wonder sometimes if that's blood, actually. Nobody really knows what the soma drink is, but um, I wonder if it's blood. Anyway, but, you know, I can interpret it what I think it is. I could say, yeah, yeah, definitely, 100%. That's, uh, you know, that's an AI chip. That's what it is. And Indra has been telling us that he wants us to drink AI or put it in our brains. That's what Soma is. And I can interpret it in our modern lingo, but um, that's not what the original author meant. And we don't know who the original author of the Vedas are. And definitely not the Rig Veda, the oldest. Um, whoever the original authors were, they obviously didn't know about AI. Um, and it, if their God, if Indra was legitimately trying to tell the prophet or prophetess, whoever wrote this down, about AI, then we could never know that either. I mean, we could never know because we're going to say, oh, that's a, of course that's what he was saying, but how do we know? He, he calls it Soma. We don't really know. And actually, it's more relatable to grass because it seems like that's the context. It's almost like some kind of hallucinative thing, but the gods actually drink it too. You know, so everybody drinks it. And it's mentioned like 
hundreds of times. You know, the Rig Veda is very large. Anyway, it's taking ancient contexts and interpreting it through our modern eyes. It just seems like it just seems dishonest, I guess. I want to be fair to the original authors. Yeah, it's the same problem with today, though. It's like people want to say those old authors are do this did this any of this old context have any variants in the future context and if the answer is no then i would say the same plays the future context has no bearings on past context but the issue is what gets difficult is is most people don't believe that it's like if you take any ancient civilization everybody's going to say where did they get their influence from and so the future always is predicated on something that the past has influenced on but then that predicates the idea that all your future is influenced by that present moment event, which then is always every second is that next present moment. So there is some justification to say there is a bridge where they both meet somewhere to have a universal context. But then, yeah, if you want to figure out what that is, you have to give some kind of freedom for that context of that civilization whatever that time period is to be free to say whatever they were saying that doesn't mean it doesn't have no effect in the future but you got to let them say whatever they're saying so you can understand the future and it does it does the rig veda sounds a lot like egyptian literature it sounds a lot like uh the uh israeli the judaic literature it sounds a lot like the christian literature and you know rightly so it, it does date afterwards we the oldest manuscripts five fifth century ad so it makes sense why it would sound like those more older contexts so you see a lot of it. it's like uh, again it makes claims that it predates it but it's like well we don't have any historical evidence to prove that it predates any of those so who are we going to believe we're just going to say egypt is a farce egypt came from hinduism i don't think so judaism came from hindu i don't think so so now we we have older manuscripts for that stuff but and my whole my point is, um, yeah, they probably they borrowed their context from older sources. That's obvious. Just like Nostradamus, Nostradamus, you know, he sounds a lot like these ancient sources too, because you know he obviously came way later. So, so I, I want to know the original sources, and I want to know what the original authors meant by portraying these, because maybe they're onto something. Are they just stuck in very old technology and they were really on to nothing but whatever they were on? <laughs> well, you know, AI is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Joshua is actually told to kill the people yeah. of AI. Yeah. And it says that AI, the people of AI, actually wiped out a big portion of Joshua's uh, people that he told to go mm -hmm. wipe them out. So there's this struggle between <laughs> Joshua and AI living in the promised land. That's an interesting little text. Anyway, I'm not, but see how easy it is to connect. It's like, oh yeah, AI, that's what it is. It's too easy. It's always going to be like that in every future generation. Like you can make the same correlation with Julius Verne's. You can make the same correlation with, uh, you know, any, any book in some sense, if it's a past book, you can say they saw the future and here it is. Or you can just say they were seeing something in their context but maybe it had nothing to do with the future maybe it just had to do with them as a dreamer because every civilization dreams that doesn't mean they were predicting the future but they were dreaming they saw something and i would think any civilization would be like that because we're all every civilization is looking for technology and they're dreaming about it but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a prophecy of some sort again just a thought just came to mind that term antichrist like host was saying earlier the guy, John, who wrote about this Antichrist, he actually says the Antichrist is here right now. Now, I know a lot of futuristic uh, people, they say, well, John says the spirit of the Antichrist is here right now. But no, the spirit, the word spirit doesn't appear in the Greek. It just says the Antichrist. So this guy, John, if you believe it was John or somebody else, maybe it's a Gnostic or some kind of pseudopigraphorg, if, whatever you want to believe about it. Whoever this author is claiming to be John, says that the Antichrist is here right now. So maybe the Antichrist has been here for 2,000 years, but that's what I'm saying. Like it, it just seems disrespectful to the ancient text to force fit it into our, our modern generation. What did the author mean by Antichrist? What does that mean? Someone who's opposing Christ, obviously. If this John is believing in Christ, 
and someone is opposing Christ, then that's obvious what that means is anti-Christ. And then you have to figure out, well, what does that even mean? And that now you're going somewhere, but you're going to find out that it's, it has nothing to do with AI and technology. I, I guarantee you that. I don't think the author, um, it, those, those manuscripts date back to the second century AD. So I don't think they had any kind of 2024 ideas in their minds. And I, I would never want to judge them for that. It's like, how could you not know that we would have cars? And how could you know that we would not have MacBook Pros and all this? It's like, because that wasn't their time. Anyway. Well, you know, I talked about it earlier with host, I mean, colleague too. Google's DeepMind, they just started implementing something called uh, SIMA. I don't even know how you pronounce the acronym, but it's S-I-M-A, which is Scalable, Instructable, uh, Multi- multi-world agents scalable instructable multi-world agents so what they did was they got these ai agents to start playing simulated game uh you guys can't see it but on here it's the called goat simulator 3 well you have it on the yeah it's coming out but, on saturday but uh well the reason why i'm bringing it up is because it's correlated with the same implication of projection within see to me when i look at <clears throat> ancient civilizations it's just like a video game. I don't know if it what was real or not, but I have this picture in my head based upon what history books tell me, what scholars may tell me, and I start creating this simulated reality, right? And that's what I assume most people do. And it's kind of like this idea with AI. AI doesn't know about no simulated world, but you, the person making the game, creates the simulated world. And AI goes in it and starts playing with it. It's not saying that's not real. This ain't true. And it's not making presuppositions. It's going in there and saying, this is my given world. And I'm going to start interacting with it. And it starts doing what it can do because this is what it's been given. It just doesn't say, I don't believe this is lies and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And because they have AI agents already learning how to play these video games and then learning how to manipulate objects and not trying to create new fi facts about it. They're just learning how to play with objects like you. When you when you see a car, you don't say, hey, that's not a real car. This is something else. You, you learn that it's a real object. You learn how to use that object to the highest efficiency. And then you go about your life. AI is doing the same thing with these video games. So you guys are going to look into it. It's called Scalable instruct Instructable uh, Multi-World Agents. But I would say AI is just as, they're doing the same thing. They're not saying, oh, well, this is predicting the future or this isn't real or something. Whatever their world is, that's just what it is. And so it's the same thing when I look back in these history contexts. It's a different world. It's not our world. We don't live. The world doesn't live like that no more. That doesn't exist anymore. It's all simulated. I have to simulate it because it doesn't exist. And so I have to pretend that this world is like what they're telling us. And then I can start to understand how to manipulate that world and use that world and figure out that world like a video game. I can't, in, I can't hyper project my world into that world or that world wouldn't exist anymore. It just become what I'm living in today. You actually get rid of that ancient world because you just make it what you experience today. So you have to be able to play a video game in some sense when you look at the history or the future because it doesn't exist. It's a simulated world. For all you know, because you can never replicate it again. But you have to be honest so you can play with that stuff. It's like you can't put a car back in the Roman days. It's just, it, that's not real. I saw someone made a video game where you can actually bring modern technology back into the past. I was like, well. Yeah, no, but that, that does, that'll show you how, how this is not efficient. It's, that's, that would just break the simulation. Yeah, it's like uh, Back to the Future. You, yeah. know, you drive this car and almost hit someone's horse. But it'd be the same thing if I took somebody from the Roman days and brought them in 2024. It's just not efficient. There's no, there's not a real connection. You just have to play this video game and it's its own video game. It's just its own thing. And then when you're living, it's your own thing. And to really understand those things, you have to separate it. They're like their own video games. Like their own horizons. Yeah. And there's two of them. Yeah, that's true. It's always going to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to be honest about that. And that's that's the tough part is you have to be honest about well, it. We know of one individual who was honest. Yeah. About that. This two be. horizons. <laughs> um, anyway, Noel Cloud says, eye muscles are atrophying. 
that meme cycle, humans create AI, AI conquers humanity, the sun wipes out AI, humans worship the sun. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Jan Thomas. Assuming that's, you know, I don't think he had that in mind either. Yeah, and Parody Bear says that it's a new Mandela effect. The the fact that the word year is missing from that song, I guess. Oh, that's actually a real song. Yeah, from uh, the Rolling I thought Stones. He made that. Okay. No, the Rolling Stones, I guess. Oh. Yeah, I, okay. I never listened now to them. Now that so. makes sense. All right. Yeah, so I guess it was a Mandela effect, a new one. So you guys can check that out, I guess. That's interesting. Rolling Stones just became that much more interesting. <laughs> 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 I know I'm the weird one for saying I know everybody loves the Rolling Stones. No Cloud says, like the re-recording of We Are the Champions, where they don't end with of the world. Yeah, I know. Mark M says, sure, we would still have ham radios, but that's a very small group of folks these days, especially folks that can repair radios once they start to wear out. Yeah, I actually heard that the only reason radios exist right now is because uh, people are still driving in cars. Like The radios are only playing in cars these days. So if we get rid of cars, or at least everybody stops listening to it in their cars, and yeah. Well, I mean, it's efficient for, you know, specific usages like semi-trucks. Uh, yeah, but people have Spotify for that now. You just put it in your ear. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that kind of radio, like CB radio. No, we're talking about ham. Yeah, people use ham radio transmissions. <clears throat> it's called shortwave, shortwave radios, and they can travel far distances and travel half around the world. Um, so... I mean, it's basic old school technology, but a lot of people may use short waves for communicational devices. It doesn't have to just be like music. I, and I don't know the context of what uh, Mark was talking about. This is my YouTube name says, has this many prophecies come to fruition at the t same time in history? Well, it depends which prophecies. sacred text you're referring to. Yeah. It, yes. They all have different prophecies talking about different things. And if we try to project whatever's going on in 2024 to those ancient texts, I'm sure we can try to make it fit in almost any of them. So it just really depends on which ancient manuscript you're talking about. Yeah. Ask the Jehovah's Witnesses in uh, you know, 1914 and 1941 and how many times they did the same thing and actually ruined people's lives. People did not have kids. They sold everything they own. People who subscribe to the Jehovah's Witness faith, they actually uh, will tell you about it on YouTube. Unfortunately for Jehovah's Witnesses, they're not allowed to watch YouTube, so they'll never hear these ex-Jehovah's Witnesses uh, testimonies. And uh, unfortunately, like, yeah, it's just sad. You know, these people are old now, and they wasted their whole life believing a lie because they believed, look, look at all these things. They took ancient texts and applied it to their modern life, and that's what happened. No, I don't know, colleague's position. I'm not saying that all ancient texts doesn't have some kind of futuristic possibility. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But we have to be very careful when we imply those things because then you, once you create a claim, you have to make a standard to judge those claims. Like if you, and I don't want to go into an arbitrary argument, but when you peck something, and then you say this is a definitive, somebody naturally is going to come along and saying, how do you know that that's a definitive? So you are now required by making a claim to also create a legend, like a, a range of scale. Like, <coughs> how do you prove that this claim is the one we should trust for the future and not this claim? Because then, yeah, it gets arbitrary. So, you, And the burden of proof is on the one who's making the claim. They have to make that so then we can equally go through whatever ancient text or whatever you're using to see if this fits up. And if it does, fair enough. But if it doesn't, fair enough. But the claimer has to make that. You can't put the burden of proof on the one who's rejecting the claim. The, the burden of proof is always the asserter, not the denier. Toxic Splenda Poppy Vela says LFG. It's in the game. It's in the flame. Because mm. he put a flame out there, too. <laughs> <laughs> flame on. No, Parody Bear says, Oscar Mayer Wiener or Oscar Mayer Wainer? Weiner. I don't know. I don't, I never, I don't know. Uh, what is, it? is that uh, Scott Wiener? <laughs> that, that congressman? Oh, uh, yeah. And Parody Bear says, Tostinos or Totinos? Tony. I don't remember. What about Tony's seasoning? And then this is my YouTube name, says Febreze or Febreze, with, spelled with one E or two E's. Febros. 
Fabrizi would be a cool uh, rap name. Uh, little Fabrizi. This is my YouTube name. Says the Mark of the Beast. Uh, oh, so she's listing things. So the Mark of the Beast is coming past uh, on the head. It's coming past the freaking rivers drying up. <laughs> <laughs> is a real. Is uh, real. would be surrounded. Too many coincidences. Maybe so, but you know, maybe not. And again, how do we know? How do you create the standard that all of us can look at and say, this is how we know, like epistemologically know something that whatever you're saying is the truth. Like one for one, this thing that you're saying means AI or means atomic bombs or means helicopter. How can we know that for sure? You guys have probably heard of the uh, Jewish phylacteries. If not, you just Google it. These things have been around literally since the time of the Exodus in the uh, Hebrew Bible. Time of the Exodus, that's, you know, the Passover. That's when God instituted the Passover and wearing the phylacteries on your wrist and your forehead. Now, in the uh, ancient Talmudic literature, the rabbis debate which hand to wear it on, the right hand or left hand. And unfortunately, we don't have any historical record to prove which hand they were actually wearing it on. Other than Philo, he talks about, you know, people wearing it on their uh, wrist and but they were wearing it on their forehead. So unfortunately, all these Christian Jesus movies, they get it all wrong. They don't put the phylacteries on the wrist and forehead. Is it a coincidence that um, this John character, once again, called out these things being worn on the wrist and forehead? And he calls it the mark of the beast because the people wearing these phylacteries, these leather pouches with scriptures in them, the very people wearing these phylacteries on their wrist and forehead were the ones killing the Christians, like John, the author of the book of Revelation and 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Again, if you believe the claim. <clears throat> Is it a coincidence that those things are going on in his day and he was calling out these uh, Christian-hating Jews who are killing other Jews who are claiming to be Christian? I don't think that's a coincidence. If, I'm, if it's put on in my hands, like, do, we, do I believe that John is calling out the Jewish phylacteries in his day, one on the wrist and forehead, or is he talking about Elon Musk's, you know, cybernetic technology? I'm going to lean towards the context of John's day. Um, the same thing with Israel's, uh, the uh, um, Euphrates River drying up. That, that was prophesied long ago, even before the New Testament time in the Hebrew scriptures by Ezekiel. That was prophesied to happen. And again, it did happen uh, symbolically and physically. Um, the king of Assyria actually uh, uh, dried it up. He had to, so he'd cross it over, cross over it. So what he did was he is very smart. Actually, he had, he had it split into many different canals by having his soldiers drop a bunch of rocks and obstacles in it. So he actually caused it to dry up so he can cross over it. It's actually a very smart thing to do. Um, <laughs> Israel being surrounded again, you read Josephus that happened as well. Jerusalem was surrounded by Titus right before the temple's destruction which this Jesus character of the New Testament prophesied about. So I might have think that that's all just a big coincidence and that's not what anybody was talking about in their time frame. Uh, I don't know. You can think so. I have a hard time meeting that conclusion. So I think they're talking about their context. And maybe they are. But if you want to believe that they're not, you have to agree to your own premises. You can't just pick things and not pick things. So if you want to believe that they are talking about the future, you have to figure out when. And, and you have to be honest that it sounds pretty convenient that it happens to be when you're alive. So if the people during World War I were thinking that that was the time of the apocalypse, and many of them did, you know, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, it was 1914 when they thought, you know, Christ would return and such. So the, the, the idea is, is, Fair enough. Many people thought such things. And people make mistakes, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is, is that when you propagate these claims, you have to say, oh, they were wrong. What does that mean? How many times, I guess what I'm saying is, how many times can you be wrong before you're going to admit that that's just not the case? Can you, do you get a free pass of being wrong forever? Or is at some point you have to assess that maybe it's just a wrong interpretation, and maybe there's a different one. Because how many times could I say the stock market's going to crash next year and then it doesn't? And then I say, well, it's going to crash next year. You need to put all your money in Bitcoin because it's going to crash again next year. And I keep saying this. At what, how, at what point do I stop getting the pass? 
At what point are you going to say, that guy just doesn't know how to interpret the stock market? At some point, my validity of those claims just start to get devaluated. And people have to be honest at some point. At some point, it's like, how many passes do you get before you just have to think there's a misinterpretation? And if you think the past goes on forever, well, then you have to be fair that every previous generation before you got the pass. <clears throat> but you're not going to say they were right because clearly the apocalypse hasn't come. So when they thought this in the 1800s and in the 1900s, those people really believed they were right. But you're going to say, no, they were wrong. And then, you know, 100 years from now, if what you currently believe about the apocalypse doesn't happen, those people are going to say, hey, those guys in 2024 were wrong. How long does this progression continue before people have to realize maybe it just wasn't right to begin with, the interpretation? You know, look at what they do with the Mayan calendar. It's like another well, yeah, I know. ancient yeah. historical artifact that they took and completely ignore how it was read in that time frame of the Mayans which is also, they actually came after the Olmecs, another American tribe uh, before the natives. They, you know, we, it's like, who cares how they read it and how they meant it? We're just going to apply it to our lives today. Yeah, so that, what I'm yeah. saying is not, it's about a Christian dialect. This is any apocalyptic literature. So yeah, it doesn't matter if you are indigenous, like you have these Indian apocalyptic constructs, or if you're Chinese, or if you're whatever, Roman. They all had these, after the first century, you start seeing apocalyptic, apocalyptic literature more common. And then all these people start thinking, maybe it's now, maybe it's now. And they always were thinking, maybe it's now. And the question is, how long does this go on before people have to say, maybe it's already done. Maybe it already happened. Whatever they were talking about, because clearly now it's a thousand, two thousand years later and it's still not here. And then this is going to go on literally forever because you're giving everybody and every generation a free pass. Or at least, you know... Interpret it in the author's day and age and find one-to-one -one historical claims that they're making and then find out which ones did not come to pass. That's what I tried to do in my little revelation hot take. You know, you, you, I, I did the best I could with historical one-to-one -one parallels. And then I show you where the historical parallels stop. So at least now there's a, a justified reason to believe these parts haven't happened yet. So if there is anything that we're waiting for in the future, it could be these things. And it's not just because I'm uh, ignorantly claiming this hasn't happened yet. No, I actually looked at history and I found the parallels. And then I looked at the things that where the parallels stopped. And that, that I found out, I found that pretty interesting in my own self. So I mean, other people might not think so, but I do. Well, Jimbo Jane Alberto says, I'm interested in what you guys are working with. What do you think we're working with? <laughs> and parody bear says sketchers or sketchers with or a t or no t or sketchy you no know, only the sketchiest people wear them so ah. actually i used to wear those too you know this is burgo says you guys know the earth is flat right <laughs> oh did we get back into the flat <laughs> and, uh, <type> conversation <sighs> in the chats yeah and, uh, um parody bear says i think it's flat and chris uh, p it says it came back yeah chris p says here we go with flat earth <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, wait a minute. Oh, we need to give a shout out. Alex Jones is shielding vitamins is back. I ain't seen you in a while. And you know, I like that because he's uh, probably shielding vitamins. So they, you know, that's a good name. <laughs> and yeah. uh, Joe Rogan is shielding alpha brain. Those are good domain names to grab if you haven't already. Yeah. But yeah shout out to you. Um, this is my YouTube name says, hey, explain me this. Are we the only flat one out here? The universe is flat, and, and actually most astrophysicists and quantum physicists believe that. And Ulysses Burgo says no. But not the Earth. Many just, other just, puddles. Just the universe. I'm going to clear that. The universe. Yeah, not the Earth. Yeah. Ulysses Burgo says no. Many other puddles. You, this is my YouTube name says, but people have seen Saturn from a telescope. Then Ulysses Burgo says, you see solo luminescence lights uh, through it's water. Back. We're all back. It's all coming <clears throat> back. Yeah, we're all Mac. Yeah. This is my YouTube name says, I have heard that space is the ocean or something though. Ulysses Burgo says, buy a P-1000 before they sell out because they are banned now. Hold on. Alex is shielding Alex Jones. <coughs> Alex is shielding Alex Jones. He's just shielding himself. He says he's parody bear. He oh. just has extra Googles. Oh, that's good. Okay, and that makes sense. I was like, what happened to parody? And it's like, oh, he just, it's like uh, Ken Clark. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can't be too careful. I like that. Then Ulysses Burgo says, water above, water below. Uh-oh. 
Um, this is my YouTube name says, do you have one? This is Burgo says, I have a big lens by its own. I see solar luminescence lights through water in focus. This is my YouTube name says, let me borrow it. <laughs> uh, Ulysses Burgos says, look in YouTube, LOL. So Ulysses Burgos, do you have a YouTube, uh, account to look at? Like, do you actually, yeah, we can look at it. Yeah. That'd be cool. If you have one, put it in the, if you haven't already, I'm going to get to it eventually, but Put it in the comments and or we'll you give you a shout out. Or you put it in the Discord. Out. Yeah, either or. Yeah, whatever. You, you guys are talking about the solo luminescence. He's saying he's got a, assuming it's a he, they're saying that they have a telescope, well, a I was P1000. Gonna say, if that's the case, well, P1000, I think that's uh, the lens that goes on the uh, G3 or <clears throat> Panasonic cameras. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, it's basically the equivalent of Samsung. But the reason why I'm saying all that is SpaceX their starship just went to space today, so you probably had a good opportunity to see some more of those uh, collapsing uh, bubbles. Luminescence. Is, yeah. That's a big one. Yeah, but apparently if we go to your YouTube page, I'm assuming you have a YouTube page, we can see what you're seeing. So that'd be cool. Yeah. Chris P says, a thousand years from now, they will look back and worship in temples to the prophecy of the Simpsons. Yeah, probably. Wow. <laughs> if humans are alive in a thousand years, because that, that is one interesting thing. Regardless if the ancient texts have predicted humans' um, obsoleteness, I mean, humans destroying themselves in this day and age, regardless if that's found in ancient literature or not, it seems like that's where we're going. It seems like humans may be obsolete here pretty soon. So I don't think the world will stop, but you know, whoever is walking on the earth, whether it's AI or aliens or Russia, um, <laughs> or the cockroaches, uh, yeah, or the Simpsons, maybe will come to life. Who knows? Or us would just be living like the cows in the in the Matrix. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be funny if we actually are all cows in real <laughs> life. But you know. yeah, we do. You know, but you know the uh, in India, and you know, the cows are sacred. They they don't they they don't have the Big Mac. They have the Chicken Mac, a McChicken Mac. I know. Okay, they don't eat beef. Yeah, it's all co coincidental. Sounds a lot like the Egyptian. Or stuff. maybe it's because <laughs> they know that we're from the cows. Yeah, maybe. Or they just stole it from the Egyptians. Or maybe they knew that we're from the cows. <clears throat> the Egyptians actually have a piece called the heavenly cow. No, what I'm, what I'm saying is then maybe the Egyptians, <clears throat> maybe they know we're from cows. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, of yeah. course. Well, somebody has to know we're from the cows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's raw. Well, somebody did because, I mean, if we came from the cows, somebody was the first guy who transferred over to cow, human guy. Yeah, his, his name was Rock because he liked it raw meat. Right, his name was Rock. <laughs> Rock time. Ulysses Burgos says, I believe they write the religious books, then give it to us. So we are docile, and once it doesn't work, they do the reset. I actually used to believe something similar to that, that whatever America is doing right now, they've been doing it since the beginning, like literally since the Egyptian times. But I don't know. America has been making a lot of mistakes. And we can read about their mistakes in history. Let me rephrase that. America's only like 200 years old, first of all. But whoever the elites are, maybe it's the Masons, Illuminates, Illuminates, or whatever. And maybe they've been here. The Freemason group has been here since the Egyptians. That's what they claim anyways. But, you know, they don't have any history to prove it. You know, surprise, surprise. But let's pretend that it's real. They've been planning all this. Why so many mistakes? How many mistakes do they make? Well, everybody makes mistakes, but yeah, mm -hmm. the technical term for that would be called secessionalism. Because yeah, America's only you know a couple hundred years old, but you would have to believe like anything, you know, like a matriarch, their child's 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 child, and this could span many countries and stuff. So maybe we're like the Romans was like an easy picture, and like we're the third generation of Romans. But who was before the Romans? Maybe it was the Egyptians. And who was before that? Maybe this is secessionalism, and America today is just the propagation of that original monarch. But yeah, you know, we, we just, you have to assume, of course, it's not going to be perfect. Humans are not, unless, unless you really believe we're in a matrix. Yeah, we're cows and we're really, and then, yeah, then this is all just premeditation. Yeah. Cause saying that, you know, we didn't, that the, the ancient people knew that the earth was flat or whatever. And then, you know, we discovered that the earth is round and it's always been round or whatever. You know, that's, that's, I feel like that's the same thing. It's like, this has all just been a propagation since the beginning. Since literally the Greeks and their Atlas guy yeah, holding yeah, up the sphere. For, yeah, because it's difficult. Like, a lot of them believed the earth was round back in those days. Yeah, so it's the same thing. Like we discover that the earth is round or maybe it's flat. Or whatever, but let's say we discovered recently that the earth is round. 
Or sphere, I guess. That's sphere, the yeah, yeah, sphere. They'll say it's round two, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just flat. Yeah, you guys know what I mean. It's a globe. Yeah. But that's like saying that, you know, well, when we discover these ancient Egyptian and <coughs> other ancient literature sources, we discover them in caves. Yeah, that was all written by the Americans. The American government writ the, wrote those. And they also hid the dinosaur bones all across the world. You know, it's like we can't believe in dinosaur bones because those are all made up. Can't believe in anything now. Everything's made up. Well, I think people need to be honest. If you want to believe that, right, that's okay. But you don't call them American. See, that's what makes it feel fake. Call it. You can the call pe- it the Masons Well, or people something, who maybe. really believe this, they do call it something different, which is a lot more probable. They, they go along with the ideas of these Anunnaki's and stuff. That's fair, fine, because now you're saying it's all a secessionalism of the Anunnaki's. You can try to make something like that because that goes way back in the ideas. And America's just a derivative of the Anunnaki's. Play that game. like that. There, there's like levels to that. But you can't say we're in America. Now America is going backwards. It's not America. America's a product. It's not the foundation of anything. Yeah, that's That was me. Nobody's claiming. But they just may. From, Some people may. <clears throat> yeah, I've heard. But Ulysses is not claiming that America... Yeah did this he's he's saying the elites and uh, you know yeah I, I can agree with that if i first agree to the premise that the elites have never made a mistake because that's a lot to cover up you're hiding dinosaur bones you're hiding religious texts you're hiding uh, archaeological sites like an entire city or town that we've dug up through archaeology archaeologists have found these uh monoliths and uh the the ziggurats and all these things i mean it's all hidden by the elites. It, I mean, I don't know. It just seems too far fetched. Like we can't believe anything at that point. And yeah, host is right. The conclusion is we're all just one big cash cow. Yeah, unless you want to play like we uh, Earth is. It's a real simulation, not a like a Matrix one. Like the gods out there created this Earth, right? And they put us here, and we're like a byproduct of them, some hybrid creation. And then they play games with us, right? They'll make little dinosaurs and stuff. And then they'll hide things to confuse us and then give us some technology, communicate to some of these people, make them rich and create stuff and then mess up things. And if you believe something like that, like back to these Anunnaki concepts, like way back, and then you believe in some kind of like zoo theory, like the earth is just a zoo. It's just observations and the gods, whoever they are, are playing these games. And there's many gods and they're all arguing with each other playing this game. You could think of something like that, and, you know, that's some kind of secessionalism. And America is just a product of all these games that's been playing out for who knows how long. That may be more probable. Like, if you want to play a hypothetical theory of America. If they did that, that would actually make me believe in that they are, first of all, that there's a God, and secondly, that they are the God. If they were that perfect, it's like, wow, there is a perfect creator. It would actually make me believe that they are that perfect creator. Yeah, unless these creators are just like uh, like children. They're just playing, so they make mistakes. I think they're entertained by it. But they're not perfect. No, they wouldn't be. Of course not. That's yeah. They do it on purpose because they want to laugh and play with their creation. And they yeah. make mistakes on purpose to say, what would they do if I did this? And what would they do if I did that? And yeah, it's not like a god to worship. It's just a god that's playing with their world that they it's, created. It's easier to believe in an actual god than that. that just, I don't know. That's just well, me. a lot of people it's believe that kind of construct. I know. That, that's cool. It's just me, though. And me, though. Ulysses Burgos says Ninja Turtles, Shredder is now the Shredder. Shredder versus uh, the Shredder. I don't remember. Do you shred your own cheese? I shrewd it. Uh. <laughs> Shrewder <laughs> pops. <laughs> you know, long, once upon a time, back in the 2020s when crypto was on that super run, I was going to create a coin called Shrewder coin, but I guess somebody else already created it. Yeah, the Shrewd buck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Noah Cloud says, how about cargo cults? How many religions came out about because of something like that? Like cargo pants? Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've been, uh, or is he talking about like the, the, the children in the cargo containers? <laughs> yeah, well, you have to expand on that. Because that's a cargo cult too. We can touch on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. Easter Island. How I define cult, you know, you can define cult very specifically or very generically, but how I define it is someone who basically stole someone else's original thought. You know, like what the Mormons did with the Christians, if, you know, if they, if you steal someone else's idea and then say, yeah, the original is actually wrong, you should follow our new idea. That's not to say that's a cult. But it is, you know, it's difficult. And of course, you know, my mind always difficult. We're going to get even more tedious about this. I don't want to get too semantical, but you know, like I've said earlier, 
Anytime anyone makes a claim, the burden of proof is on the claimer to make a legend or some scalability of how you determine this. So you can even make this argument with interdenominations of every religion. There's multiple ranges of Hinduism. There's multiple ranges of Protestantism. There's multiple ranges of uh, Muslims and everything. And are those all cults? Those uh, main groups may not call them cults. They call them denominations or offbreaks. But are they cults? Yeah, cults don't usually admit that they're cults because they want you to follow their ideas. So you can't just go up and ask them, are you a cult? They're going to say, no, but we're they, actually the original. That's, we're the OG. Yeah, people. and everybody always claims to go back to being the pure bloodline. Yeah. yeah, And that's the difficult part, and that's why this gets really subjective. It's difficult. Well, that's why you know I, I, I value history because you could tell who actually showed up first in history. Yeah, but then you that's still have it. to play the same game. It's like, how far back do we go in history? Who, where... Who was the first uninfluential influencer? No, it's like like I said, Hinduism has a lot of original thoughts, but they you can tell that they also borrowed a lot of original thoughts from older religions that were before them. You can tell. And of course, Hinduism is going to claim, no, 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 no. We're the oldest religion. And it's like, yeah, you go ask a Mormon that, they're going to say the same thing. Ask any break off of anybody, they're going to claim to be the yeah, original. But like, Let's just stick with Mesopotamia, right? That, that's ancient. There was many multiple sets of animal worships. They all had their Anunnaki's or their little totem deity council gods. And they all believed in something different. But who was really the super influencer? And at that point, it gets complicated. Well, it's, it's difficult because the oldest known... Yeah, we don't have a lot of those manuscripts. We wouldn't know, yeah, really. The but. oldest known text we have is the Eridu Genesis story. And it's not very big. And even at that, it's fragmentary. So... Um, there's not a whole lot we can work on with that, but you can tell how the theme was borrowed by later religious groups. Um, they put this though around, I think 27 BC, uh, 20, 2700 BC or everybody makes a claim. That's all I'm saying. Don't be naive and just believe whatever, you know, the claimer, the cult tells you, you know, do your own research, figure out if oh, they, yeah, if yeah, they yeah, actually absolutely. have evidence that goes back as far as they claim they do. I can't tell you how many times I've heard it and how many times I've heard it. The Hindu scriptures, they go back to 200,000 BC. 200, yeah, the people make those claims. No, and they, people actually debate. It's like, no. These are all lay people, of course. These aren't the actual scholars. But these are all lay people. No, it only goes back 50,000 BC. It's like, <laughs> you guys are wild. Um, I guess I should say BCE, right? It doesn't matter. You know, it's just... 250, you know, 200,000. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they make claims. Some people go, say it goes back into the millennia, like literally a million. I don't even know what term we'd use oh, for it's that. Like, it's like... Even the ones who believe in... <clears throat> like, they, I think they, they try to date that the, the partition of the Homo sapiens, like 250,000. <laughs> yeah, well, people make claims. I mean, that's, that's what I'm that, saying. That's next level. <laughs> yeah, you know... Tall claims re requires some tall Man, I never heard of that, but whoever's saying that, that's, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's third base. Oh, yeah. I think it's third base that people even say it goes back uh, to second. The, the common scholarly consensus, they say the, the scriptures claim to go back to the 21st century BC. Um, so it doesn't sound too wild. To me, it sounds still wild because, again, the manuscripts only date back to 500 AD. <laughs> that's embarrassing first of all if, if for anybody making these wild claims the telephone game it's like man 500 ad and you're gonna believe it just because it said so even though you have differing manuscripts that contradict each other it's like yeah so it depends on which you know if you're listening to some serious scholarship or not um if you guys are interested i could tell you which ones that i'm reading from but yeah anyway it doesn't matter it's just there's, there are real cults out there, and religion hurts people. At least a lot of religions do hurt people, so that's one of the interests of mine. Yeah, I, I have the same quandary with everything. You know, I, I'm, for me, it's not specific. Either you're, everybody has to pick an authority because you don't know if what, what they're any, anybody's saying is true because unless you're an actual on the front lines archaeologist, like digging it and touching it yourself and verifying any of it, you're just playing the phone game with the authorities. So at some point, you have to believe in something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At some point, you have to cross the line and say, I don't know, but I believe it. And then you have to deal with the consensus problem, which is a confirmation bias. You have to say, well, everybody says that these things and all these authorities say these things. So then I just have to agree with the confirmation bias of these authorities that, that, that what they're saying is true. 
And so everybody at some point, no matter what you believe in, from religion to science to anything, this is the, this is the problem of epistemology. It really is. Because as much as we all think we know something, we're all trusting somebody to, on the hinge point of that it's real. And there's no way to really prove it. So everybody has a layer of faith. I don't care what they say. Everybody's having faith on something. Alex Jones is shilling vitamins. Man, I, you know, I just like that name. <laughs> <laughs> he says Space Force is real. Uh, Space Force is real. Now, Space Real, you guys can argue about that, like Flat Earth, but uh, <laughs> Space Force is real. Donald Trump, I think he created that in 2018, if I, I think, 18. This is my YouTube name, says, so if we are not to apply the ancient text to life now, what is it for? Yeah, I'd say I mean the principle is still the same. It's always going to be the same because there's nothing to do under the sun, right? The principle is the same, so you can apply the principles. But to think that you know they had cars back then and they're going to tell you how to fix your engine, it's well, you're free to believe whatever you want. Well, I guess it depends how you what, what you're asking in that question. I guess I don't want to be I don't want to play it off as you know just arbitrary. If you're asking, uh, do we apply it in our life today? Yes, absolutely. All technology is a derivative of pr past histories, right? The wheel came, and then somebody made a better wheel, and then somebody made some kind of uh, hydraulic apparatus, right? These are all past things, and then we use those past things in our current life, and we build upon it and get better and better, and then future events happen, which become history events, and then we just keep, and we have to remember history, right? Because if we forget it, then we're going to lose all our technology. We'll have to start all over. So yes, we do use it in our life. Absolutely. And that's what history is for. But that doesn't mean those historical cultures, philosophies, and beliefs force the same replication today. Back in the day, they thought animal sacrifice actually would change the way gods would do something. Now, do you believe that? But they did, even though they were advancing in technology or whatever they're doing. And that's fine. That's what their culture thought. Even though I can appreciate their history and use it in my life today, because that's what technology is, I don't have to think that animal sacrifices are swaying the Anunnaki's. I, I don't have to believe that to use their history today. So I think that's a good point you bring up. Like, unless anybody in this chat or anybody in the world is still sacrificing animals, Nobody actually believes that they're applying it one-to-one -to, -one to their life. They're using the principle of it. We want to make the gods happy. Maybe it doesn't look like sacrifice anymore. Maybe it looks like whatever it is. Yeah, I've made this analogy many times. Manifestation, like I always say, if I burn a piece of wood, it's not like you get rid of that carbon, right? It turns into ash. It changes form. It's still there. And then it turns into smoke. It's still there. It's just a different form. That doesn't mean you actually get rid of the premise it just has a different manifestation. And I would say that's kind of like a history. It's not like you got rid of it. It just has a different shape. And maybe now it's more efficacious. It's more efficient. But it's not like it's gone. Yeah, I don't think people are wrong for applying their scriptures to their lives today, like Christians or whoever they are. I think it's, it's not fair to the ancient people. And it's not fair to the modern people when people start applying prophetic value to something. Like the gods have spoken that the stock market's going to crash. So you end up selling everything and you ruin your life because these religious mo movements uh, unfortunately dictate that. They tell you God has said this, so you believe it. I, I think that's where you should draw the line. Just don't put the prophetic value on it. Yeah, and I'm going to say you can. You just have to be consistent with it. I don't care. I'll, yeah, let every, yeah, yeah. I'll let anybody believe anything and I'll help you believe it. You just have to believe it at the end of the day. I want you to say it. And that's if you ever hear me say that, I want you to say it. That's what I'm saying. At the end, it's going to sound crazy. It always will. And I don't care what you believe in. It's going to sound crazy. You just need to say it. Say it. <clears throat> and then, you know, that's cool because we all have faith at some point. You just got to say it. Yeah, I'll say it. Man, that's fine. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think there's things in Revelation that are happening right now. But it's probably not what anybody expects that those things are. But I, I think they are happening right now. Yeah. So. I'm not going to get into that, so Just you can check out my it. videos if you want to know more about that. <laughs> Just got to say it. Yeah. Noah Cloud says, or when all the adults and wisdom keepers in a society suddenly die and the children are the only survivors and have to figure out everything again. Yeah, that's Chan Thomas's idea. When the whole reset, not the great reset of America is planning, but the great reset of the entire world. 
Mark M says the pyramids were ancient technology that made the area around it go from lush greenery to a deserted wasteland. I wonder what our technology will do to us this time around. Wow, that's a strong claim. I would assume it's just circumstance of the environment. You know, that's a thousands and thousands of years. There could be a lot of environmental change that caused that shift. Uh, you know, like wind and sand erosion and all kinds of stuff. But if it's the actual pyramid technology, and again, when you say that, see, I don't care what you believe. I'm trying to figure out how to make it work. It's like maybe if the pyramids were like conductors and all that electricity started frying the ground. And But this is the things you have to accept. Like if you want to believe that, that's cool. But you got to start saying this stuff. Like you got to just admit that maybe these are these weird things that happen. But Could then, be from foot traffic, too, because yeah. all the building projects they had to do. But it wouldn't have destroyed the whole entire area. and Because now the whole Mesopotamia area is pretty barren. And so something, I, to me, it seems like it's an environmental issue. It's something shifted environmentally that caused that whole place to be barren. Because it was very... Uh, lush. Like, yeah, lush and green and, you know, and whatever. That's why everybody went to the Mesopotamia area where all this farming would be very easy to grow in that area. But something happened to where now it's just barren. So I would assume that's environmental, but I don't, I don't know about Egypt's uh, pyramids, but if you believe that, yeah, you have to figure out what caused, why, why the pyramids caused that. Yeah, building a mound on the ground shouldn't stop anything from growing around it. Unless, of course, we are assuming some kind of alien tech or Yeah, like some super, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Then you have to start thinking really what was the pyramids, and that's fair. Yeah. GG says, have y'all seen the billionaire's doomsday, doomsday map? Are you, are you talking about where they're building underground infrastructures? Have you seen a billionaire's map? I talked about it before. I don't know if you're talking. I don't know about the map. I made, I came up with my own map. I called it the doomsday triangulation. I, I can't even, I can't remember. But basically, there's all these doomsday billionaires are building bunkers in New Zealand, New Zealand. There's billionaire bunkers building in Hawaii, like Larry Ellison, the CEO of Oracle and Zuckerberg and, uh, that, uh, woman, Oprah. And then there's Antarctica. And when you look at it on the map, it's a perfect triangulation. Yeah. I remember you talking yeah, about that. And yeah. So if you're talking about that, yeah, I, I see this correlation of doomsday bunkers in New Zealand, Hawaii, and Antarctica. Maybe there's something else. And if so, yeah, let us know. Noah Cloud says, Cat Williams was talking about knowing where the Garden of Eden is. You guys got to get Cat on here. If he wants to come on, I'd be more than happy. He will probably make this channel be infamous. He, uh, he made, uh, I think one of the biggest interviews of all YouTube history was Cat and Shane, uh, Shannon Sharp. And uh, he just went on the Rogan show. So yeah, Cat Williams, you want to come on Toilet Time TV? We welcome you. <laughs> Help us yeah. take this platform to the highest of levels. Help us find the chalice of life. Yes. Then everybody in the world can enjoy this kind of open dialogue. <laughs> yeah, because if we find the Garden of Eden, we're free. Yeah, we can live forever. That spinning sword's going to pierce everyone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The cherubim. Yeah. We're going to have eternal elixirs. You know, I know archaeologists use the uh, Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible for archaeology, but that would really be a big proof that the Hebrew Bible actually had some validity to it. So no cloud says Mark M. I think we're almost at a post scarcity society. We artificially limit what we can do because it costs too much money. Yeah. You know, the issue is, is that does currency like, like I, oh, like I was saying, you know, manifestations are different, but does the, does the root of a, you know, this is platonic ideas are timeless, right? They can go from one generation to another generation to another one, and they don't die. They just get built upon because ideas aren't people. They're abstracts, right? But people die, which all that allows is a new person to take the old idea and add upon it. And why, why I'm saying that is because is if you're thinking that we're reaching a precipice, like an endpoint of currency or money or anything, what you're saying is that an idea will die. Money is just an idea. It's just a format of justified or equal trading you you feel like this is fair trading like i get something and that has changed over secession right before maybe it was bartering 
And then it became, you know, coinage. And then it became homage to the kings or whatever. And today we live in this format of money. But this format of currency, is it ever going to change? Maybe in the future, it's energy, like the matrix. Like you're just going to be stuck in some, you know, isolated cubicle and they're going to be putting this fluid all over you and they're just going to be sucking your heat because every human produces about 100 to 200 watts of heat. So you just become this exertive energy heat source. And for exchange of that, you get this matrix of utopias that you can do whatever you want. And that's the currency then in the future. Your currency is your heat in exchange for the matrix. So I don't really know if there will ever be an end unless there's an end to reality, like the world ends, like the whole entire consciousness ends. I think there's always going to be some kind of transactional format. It just may not be what we want or what we picture. But then again, this is the same problem with the apocalypse. Every generation thinks that their generation is the worst. And so they think it's the end when it's just changing in the way it looks. It's not really ending. Unless you think ideas die. And I don't think ideas ever die. They just get bigger and more expansive. This is my YouTube name. Says we have such overwhelming evidence something is going to happen. And the Bible is nothing but interpretations. That's, that's interpretable. <laughs> <laughs> it's all analogous. Alex Jones, uh, uh, Alex Jones is shilling vitamins. Says, was it depends or just depend? Well, that depends if you're talking about depends. Like... Talking about the underwear? <laughs> it's very deep. Yeah. Then he says, white out or white out with an H or no H. Oh, we're still talking about these um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mandela's. Yeah. Um, Gigi says, speaking of cows, have y'all heard of the red heifer in Israel? It's a lot of talk lately about it. We talked about it last time, but I was actually going to read it this time. So this is where it is right here. So book six, 292 of Josephus's war, as he's an eyewitness to this stuff. He says, at the same festival also, a heifer, as she was led by the high priest to be sacrificed, brought forth a lamb in the middle of the temple. <laughs> this is in front of everyone. This heifer, which, you know, of course, according to the Jewish literature, this is a red heifer. And it, the reason you'd bring one of these in is because you killed somebody, whether on accident or on purpose. This is the sacrifice that had to be made. That's why they brought this red heifer into the temple. And it gives birth to a lamb in front of everyone. And I just read it to you right here from an eyewitness testimony that saw this thing happen. Um, he goes on to explain how these massive doors of the temple just opened all by themselves at one point. Go down to verse 298. He says, and were not the events that followed of such of so considerable a nature as to deserve such signals. For before sunsetting, chariots and troops of soldiers in their armor were seen running about among the clouds and surrounding the cities. We're talking about, you know, surrounding the cities of Jerusalem. Um, these soldiers in the sky. And Josephus actually says, uh, a certain pr uh, prodigious and incredible phenomenon appeared. I suppose the account of it would seem to be a fable were it not related by those who saw it. Tacitus, a Greek historian, the same time period, he also records these weird things happening. The same exact thing. He actually says he sees these godlike figures running around the clouds surrounding the city of Jerusalem. Uh, not to confuse Tacitus and Titus, but anyway. Uh, so concerning the red heifer, I, I keep hearing people bring up the red heifer in Israel. It's like, if you're talking about some kind of prophecy, again, putting it back in its original context. Uh, I feel like that had would have if those prophecies were real, then they were fulfilled. As yeah, we, what I read. think, what people are assuming is, is because these Jewish rabbis are trying to reproduce these red heifers. If somebody's creating something now, that means either it's because it's a derivative of belief, or it's because you're creating a new belief. So if these rabbis are making it today, either they're trying to bring back something that they feel like was lost, or they're trying to create something new, which is supposed to be. So it's like if you have a presupposition that apocalypse is true, then your tendency to believe is they're bringing back something because the future is trying to be satisfied. If you believe that they're just trying to go back to their heritage, then maybe they're just trying to bring back that because they're trying to be Orthodox Jews. It really just depends on what you believe that these rabbis are really trying to accomplish because well, these red heifers are sitting around. It all seems too coincidentally connected to this what they call futuristic interpretations of the mm -hmm. Bible, as you know. 
so they they say, for example, that the uh, 1948 prophecy of Israel becoming a nation is found in the Christian Bible, which it's not. They say that the red heifer is supposed to be uh, in this third and final temple, which it's not. That's not a prophecy in the Christian or Old Testament Bible either. Um, they say that there's supposed to be a third temple that's supposed to be built and then destroyed, and you know, abomination, desolation, all that stuff. That's not found anywhere either. The abomination desolation is found, but not this third temple that had to be built first. That's not anywhere in the New Testament either. And the reason why they do all this is because they ignore what the New Testament claims about the actual temple, the Jewish temple that was surrounding, or that the Jewish life surrounded around. All of these things pertain to that Jewish temple. That's where they're, that's the time from they're writing it in. But because all of these things apparently happened, as we can read from Josephus and Tacitus and Pliny and Plutarch and all these other ancient historians that were, uh, some of them were eyewitnesses, some of them were not, because we can read about this stuff in history, um, they say, well, that can't be true because there's a lot more money to be made. And the money is demanding that we need to revive all these prophecies. So now there has to be a third temple all of a sudden, even though you're not going to find that. Now all of a sudden Israel needs to become a nation, which you're not going to find that anywhere. Now all of a sudden there needs to be this red heifer that comes out of nowhere, which you're not going to find that anywhere either. And there's many such prophecies that people who are looking to make a lot of money, uh, they're doing. They're just come up with this stuff. Or, you know, like I would say, I, I, I get it depending on what premise that you're thinking. If like the red heifer and those kind of prophecies are not directly correlated, but they're, they're correlated with that base thing. If there is to be this temple and there is to be anything, that means you're trying to predicate the idea that Orthodox Judaism would make a return and all these old lost practices at some point have to come back, which would also be sacrificing these heifers for, you know, whatever. All these things have to come back at some point. So I think what people do is they hyperbolicize the very hard ones, the very rare things. And it's like, if this happens, then we're even closer. I think yeah, they read it back in the text. Yeah, again. that's it's right. Like, that's not anywhere yeah. in there. But what they're, those things, right. Those things exclusively aren't in there. What, the, what they're trying to say is if there is to be this man of lawlessness or this uh, sacrificial construct in a temple, then we have to bring back this real Orthodox Judaism, which was lost. And want all these really ancient, hard pretexts of ancient Orthodox Judaism they start cherry picking which ones are the hardest ones or the most improbable to return, like making a red heifer. But if that happens, like, oh, we're getting closer because now we're bringing back Orthodox Judaism because we're having some of these really obscure, hard things come back. And as closer as we get back, that means we're getting closer to really satisfying that maybe they will build a temple. Maybe they will do all this stuff. And it's all just cherry picking those hard, old Orthodox things that maybe should yeah, the good question is, is, why are they bringing it back? Why are these Orthodox Jewish priests trying to bring them back? And it's not because they're Christians or something. No, I know. They're, they're trying to revive Judaism. Yeah, it has right. nothing to do with that. Right. The Christian people are the specifically the futuristic Christians who are forcing these things. Anything the Jews do, they have to force it into you know this end times and prophecy and stuff. Yeah, no, the Jews, I, I would love to see the modern self-proclaimed Jews of today, the people living in Israel, whoever they are, I would love to see them go back before the time of uh, Rabbi Shlomo, Shlomo Yitzaki, before the time of Maimonides or Maimonides, however you want to say his name. Uh, I mean, remove these guys and what do you got? I mean, the, these are their, their Moseses. They even have traditional sayings like, from Moses to Moses, there is no one, from, from the time of Moses to Moses, there's never been anyone like Moses. And they're actually applying Moses, like, you know, Ten Commandments Moses to Maimonides. But, but that's yeah. all I would imagine. If anybody's trying to bring back like these old retro Orthodox, super original ideas, it's probably something within a, like a reformed ideology of Orthodox Judaism saying all these previous interpretations of the Talmud, there's errors. And we're going to give you a better interpretation. And they should just go back to their Hebrew Bible. Just drop everything. Just go back to the written law. Yeah, yeah why not? Why not? Why just go back to Deuteronomy and say that's the end? We don't even need the rest of it. Just Deuteronomy. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah, but they're not going to do that. So Yeah, I know. I'm just saying that's the only thing that makes sense because all these Jewish priests don't do this. It's just these really selected few Jewish priests that think 
it's necessary to do these things. And then, of course, the ones who believe in the apocalypse use that as a means to say, oh, they're all doing it when it's not. Well, you know, the, the Jews do have their own apocalyptic literature. Yeah, and no, that is that, actually, that, you, everybody's, everybody's heard of the Book of Enoch. That's, that's actually the Jewish apocalyptic literature. It actually sounds a lot like the Christian Book of Revelation. In fact, the Book of Revelation actually seems like a smaller, condensed version of the Book of Enoch. Like almost every symbol is found in the Book of Enoch. And the second book of Enoch, uh, it's in, anyway, so they have apocalyptic yeah, literature too, and course. the book of Jubilees and all that. Noah Cloud says, cargo cults popped up in the Southeast Pacific that were trying to summon military cargo planes after World War II was over. The tribes didn't understand what a plane was. It was the magic bird full of food. That's cool. Wow. Yeah, I feel like I saw a documentary or something on that. I've, I can't remember though. That's interesting, though. Either way, it makes sense. Bruce House says, since AI is unstoppable and our integrating with us seems to be the same, we are in, yeah, to becoming the Borg from Star Trek. Borg from Star Trek. I'm not familiar. Me neither. With the Borg. Um, I'm sure everybody else knows what that means, so we'll just leave it. The only thing come to my mind, is that the R2-D2 guy? That's Star Wars. Uh Oh, I don't. I do know that. I saw that old Star Wars movies when I was little. But there's that gold guy. C C T C three PO. Yeah, there's that guy too. C T scan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, as you guys yeah. can tell, I'm not very fluid. I'm trying. Well, I'm more fluid in Star Wars. Yeah. Like there's uh, like it's pieces of my brain. <laughs> I I remember. When you I saw the older. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the older Star Wars. I I haven't kept up with all the other newer stuff. Yeah, it'll explain what you. I, what is this Borg from Star Trek? Uh, maybe it's short for cyborg, and well, we're, saying, we are going to become a cyborg. He's saying like, we are going to become or we're becoming the Borg from I'm Star saying, Trek. That's what I'm saying. So is it like a universal consciousness or something? Borg is probably short for cyborg. Yeah, I know. And I get that. If we are cyborgs, we are partly human and partly robotic. I'm just throwing it out there. Well, it's I'm sure you, that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, maybe it's because I I read very grammatically. So when you say the that means, in my brain, that's why it says universal consciousness. That means there's one Borg, the Borg from Star Trek. So if we all become the Borg from Star Trek, then it's like, oh, well, there's only one Borg. And if we're all one Borg, then maybe we're like this universal consciousness of AI or something. But maybe he wasn't meaning that at all. But yeah, I mean, honestly, that is what Elon's trying to do. He's trying to make us all into... Cyborgs. Yeah. And he's doing it... Uh, to save us from AI, because AI is going to crush us if we don't join AI. It's just going to be, it's too good for us. So we're going to either join it or be crushed by it, is his thought. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, you know, it is what it is. You can't stop in technology. I mean, and if you believe in an Anunnaki or some god, maybe they will. But uh, as you and I as just humans on here in this YouTube chat, we're not stopping technology. Yeah, nobody is. I mean, I just, Elon Musk couldn't stop it if he wanted to because China's going to do it. Yeah, well, if he, they don't do it, Russia's going to do it. He's just a part of it, and, and he's yeah. doing a good job at it. And, you know, he, Like today, I just saw the Starship fly, and I was like, it just showed me. All those previous crashes just seemed like they were premeditated on purpose because, I mean, that thing was just flying out. It's so weird. And and you have to believe, again, that it's real. You know, it's presuppositional. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's all AI generated. <laughs> but... uh you know, it's like that's it's it's just moving along, and everything's progressing along, and uh, you ain't you ain't stopping it. It's uh, it's right on schedule. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. If all that is real, not AI generated, it is very impressive to watch. Wow, that's a concept. AI generated AI, like AI is actually showing us what it can do. But it's all fake. Mm -hmm. It's just making. It's it has dreams. Yeah, this was it's the imagine. <laughs> it's, it's the imagination yeah, of AI. That is cool. Yeah, which a very mel very well may happen one day. You know, it's like uh, that movie, um, I Am Robot. You know, and uh, that guy, the uh, main robot, Sonny. He was having dreams, mm -hmm. and his maker actually said, "One day they will have visions. One day they will have dreams." And Will Smith kept replaying. He's like, one day they'll have visions. One day they'll have dreams. He's like, one day they'll have visions. One day they'll have dreams. Do you guys have visions? You guys have <laughs> dreams? <laughs> Not anymore. Chris P says, confusing Star Wars with Star Trek is blasphemy. <laughs> We're not confusing it. And I just, yeah, I, I am. I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Star. Well, we're about to be living in real Star Wars yeah. and Star Treks here soon with Russia. 
and they're going to invade <laughs> in our star stations. Anyway, <laughs> or so we're going to be told, and we're never going to know. Do you guys know what he was talking about with the Borg from Star Trek? So, because that's what we're talking about, but we may be way off because I don't even know what that is. Chris P says it's one cybernetic consciousness. Okay, oh, so wow. yeah, it's a universal. Right. It's a universal consciousness. Wow, you hit it right on the nail. Yeah. Well, if that was right, the Borg. Yeah, it's one thing when you use the word the. Yeah, I, I just give everybody that grace that you know they're typing on here. It gets kind of jarbled because mm. uh, it you know the talk to text and all that. Now, Cloud says they are going to kill the cows for it sacrificed its sacred ashes to summon their Messiah. Yeah, but they're missing one thing, Mr. Smart. They're missing the temple. Messiah's, where is he going to sit? He's supposed to sit on the temple. He's supposed to, according to Second Maccabees, their, their literature again, not their scripture, but their literature, their own history. Jeremiah, the prophet, hid the Ark of the Covenant. So that's why Indiana Jones was trying to find it because that thing was hidden by Jeremiah, the prophet. He needs, the temple has to be built so that way when the Messiah comes back, he will know exactly where Jeremiah found, hid that, the, the Ark and he's going to bring that Ark back into the temple. But you need the temple. Well, well, the Messiah's not coming back with no mosque. What's well, going on? What is well, that? Without Elon Musk. No, the mosque. No, I was going to say Elon <laughs> Musk. But that's all the time we have for this episode. We uh, <clears throat> enjoyed our conversation with you guys as always. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. And tune in next uh, week for another live here on Thursday on YouTube. And we will get into the good stuff. Oh, Mr. McLaughlin just come in. <laughs> they also have some interesting people on the board of TikTok. Yes, yes they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Anyways, that is all. Appreciate all of you guys. And we will see you guys again next Thursday. Same time, same place. This is TTTV. We are signing out. Spock. Shalom.